Changing gears and looking forward to next year, we've had a large amount of public input so far in a few different ways. We already had scheduled several public meetings this fall, which included a webinar for remote participation to talk about 2018 halibut seasons. These happened shortly after the bottom fish closer, closure and were a good opportunity to talk with a lot of fishermen about bottom fish. We also had several meetings of our Marine Sport Fishing Advisory Committee and staff have heard quite a bit from people in person and by phone and email. We heard very clearly from everyone about how important this fishery is to coastal communities and a range of businesses, including not just charter fishing operations, but also tackle shops, RV parks and hotels, fuel stations, restaurants, etc. And we heard about the negative economic impacts of the unscheduled closure this year. Input about season length has mostly been in favor of continuing with a year-round season. This has been a majority of private boat anglers' opinions that we've heard. Uh, with a few private anglers from smaller ports that have more difficult bar crossings suggesting that they don't fish much in the winter anyway and so don't need a 12-month season. Some charter operators we've heard from have supported maintaining a 12-month season, while others have suggested a condensed season that could preserve a higher bag limit. I know you have some folks signed up for public testimony after this and you'll get to hear directly from them uh, and that you've also received some written comments. One other thing we've heard from folks is an interest in keeping the bag limit high enough to make fishing worthwhile and attract anglers. And there are some big differences in what we hear about what high enough means. Um, with some folks uh, supporting a, a bag limit structure, maybe I'll phrase this as some folks accepting of a bag limit uh, structure as low as four fish during part of the year and we've heard from others, particularly some charter operators, that four fish just won't work for them. It's not uh, a high enough number to attract customers and would be a, a very problematic for their business. So staff distilled some key goals for the fishery in 2018 based on the range of public input we heard to help our development uh, of some bag limit and season alternatives. We certainly heard that creating a stable season and avoiding, an, avoiding an unscheduled closure is a priority so that businesses and individuals can make plans and stick to them. Staff felt that a 12-month season remains a good choice for next year based on the strong public input about the importance of a year-round season and also the fact that relatively few anglers may be aware of the potential for a shortened season. Of note, both California and Washington do have bottom fish seasons less than 12 months long. We want to consider the needs of the, uh, needs of the public in developing bag limits. And although that's not straightforward, as I noted, there's quite a diversity of opinion on that. Uh, it's important. We heard a lot of requests to keep, uh, keep a higher bag limit for the offshore long leader fishery, and we think that's a good idea, as well as continuing to offer flat fish fishing at all depths during the summer depth restriction for other species in the bottom fish fishery. Finally, we heard loud and clear the interest in getting at those offshore lingcod in the fall, so we'll keep that in mind as we develop uh, pre-season and in-season management options. So I, I'm going to go through some of our specific recommendations, uh, again, maybe from the, the easiest to the more complex issues. Starting with lingcod, although there was some interest in uh, increasing the lingcod bag limit from two to three fish next year if there's a reduction in the main marine bag, uh, in 2018 we're still constrained by yellow eye rockfish bycatch quotas. More lingcod fishing would bring more incidental catch of yellow eye rockfish and potentially uh, cause us to reach the yellow eye quota sooner, which could also have uh, some repercussions and in-season restrictions. Therefore, we recommend no change to that, meaning sticking with a, a lingcod bag limit of two fish. On flatfish, the question is whether to adopt in permanent rule the exemption of flatfish from the seasonal depth restriction as we did this fall for uh, half of September following the closure and until the bottom fish fishery opens up to all depths. We do recommend this. There would be more restrictions, uh, or pardon me, there would be some some uh, limitations on what fisheries you can combine if flatfish is open at all depths during t times of the year when the traditional bottom fish fishery is restricted to inshore, and I'll address those more in a moment. 
As I mentioned, there's also uh, some interest in establishing a separate bag limit for a long leader fishery or keeping what we have uh, put in place temporarily for this fall in place. I know we've talked to you uh, and showed you some diagrams of this gear configuration before. Its main feature is at least 30 feet of line between the terminal weight and the lowest hook. It must have a non-compressible float above the top hook to keep the hooks from sinking back down to the bottom. The gear is successful at catching midwater species like yellowtail and widow rockfish and avoids yellow eye. This gear setup is currently legal to use for bottom fish in any open area and time. Again, the federal authorization that we're waiting for is to allow fishing outside of the normal seasonal depth restriction with long leader gear from April through September when the recreational bottom fish fishery is normally restricted to shallower depths in order to minimize incidental bycatch of yellow eye rockfish. The latest information we have from the National Marine Fishery Service <coughs> is uh, to expect a um, preliminary federal rule out before the end of 2017. They'll have a public comment period and then they expect to get a final rule in place before April 1st, 2018. So we do recommend establishing a new 10 fish bag limit for offshore long leader fishing. It would apply only outside 40 fathoms, only when using this gear, and only to a specific list of eight midwater rockfish species. No lingcod or nearshore bottom fish would be allowed, and anglers would not be allowed to combine long leader trips with traditional bottom fish trips, halibut trips, or flatfish trips. These restrictions will keep incidental catch of yellow eye, black, and other nearshore rockfish to a minimum while fishing on long leader trips. In addition to the bag limit, which would be effective immediately, we rec recommend that you approve fishing seaward of the 40 fathom management line with long leader gear from April 1st to September 30th. This would be contingent on the federal authorization going in place and the uh, OAR adopting the federal rule by reference would be filed as soon as that federal rule is final. Uh, and we, sorry, I missed at the top of the slide, we also um, would need to adopt uh, a definition of long leader gear into the rule. So we recommend that you do that as well. And uh, those are all in the draft rules you have in your briefing packets. This brings us to the more challenging issue of, uh, of the primary marine fish bag limit. This bag limit includes rockfish, cabazon, greenling, as well as other miscellaneous marine species that are not covered by their own bag limit in our sport regulations. The midwater rockfish species that make up the long leader bag would also remain eligible species for this marine fish bag limit. Anglers just couldn't take 10 of them if they were not using long leader gear and fishing outside 40 fathoms. They would be limited to whatever the marine fish bag ends up as. So. Just to note that those fish would also remain uh, a potential inclusion in this bag limit. For some background information uh, to keep in mind as we talk about bag limits, this bar graph um, illustrates the seasonality of this fishery. It shows the number of angler trips by month on average between 2011 and 2016 and illustrates the seasonal pattern of the traditional bottom fish fishery when most of the fishing occurs between May and September. I'll note that on this graph, uh, May appears uh, a fair bit higher than September. Um, there have, in some years, September is a little higher compared to May, but we have looked at the data uh, going back to, I think, 2004, so a longer time period than this, and we do usually see a, a little bit higher effort in May than September. There are a couple important points to make relative to the pattern you can see in this graph. One is that a bag limit reduction has to include the summer months in order to have a significant effect. In other words, we can't just reduce the bag limit over the winter, for example, from November through March, uh, and make much of a reduction in overall catch. Second, the months of June, July, and August have, uh, in particular, have very high effort and total catch is accumulating at a rapid rate during that period making it difficult to slow or stop, the fish, stop that accumulation of catch gently. Um, I do say it's difficult, not impossible, but for example, one consequence might be the need for a very large bag limit reduction in season, uh, even if we have managed to avoid full closure. With the goals I described, which are repeated on the top of the slide here, 
staff developed a suite of bag limit alternatives. Um, I also want to note for anyone looking at a printed version of these slides, I apologize. The table originally printed with the row and col column headers blacked out. Commissioners should have a supplemental handout with a corrected slide showing what we see on screen now. Uh, and for those of you who might be looking at a, an older paper version, across the left going down are the alternative labels from A through F. And across the, the, the top row going across the column headers are months from January through December. So in developing our alternatives, staff originally focused on those that maintained a 12-month season. In addition, uh, in discussions with our Sport Fishing Advisory Committee, some members requested that we also analyze a shortened season to see if it could offer a higher bag limit during the open period. Some of the alternatives have a scheduled change in the bag limit at certain points in the year. This table format shows the seasonal variation in the bag limit for those alternatives. The different shading highlights the different bag limit levels. The bag limits and season timing here are shown for the marine fish bag only for the traditional nearshore bottom fi fish, pardon me, for the traditional bottom fish fishery. So we can assume that there is a separate lingcod bag limit of two fish in addition to what you see here, and perhaps also a long leader fishery with a 10 midwater rockfish bag, as well as an all depth flatfish fishery, depending on your other decisions today. I'll describe each marine fish bag limit alternative shown here and the rationale for it, starting from the top of the table. Alternative A would set the bag limit at six fish from the beginning of the year through the end of March, when it would drop to four fish at the same time that the seasonal depth restriction goes into effect. On October, October 1st, also when the seasonal depth restriction ends, the bag limit would go back up to six fish. This timing would minimize the dates anglers have to know about changes in fishery regulations, and the lower bag limit in the summer acknowledges the, both the fact that the summer is when a bag limit reduction has most effect, and that many, although certainly not all, summertime anglers are visitors to the coast who really want a fishing experience and may not necessarily want to take as many fillets home. Again, that is certainly not representative of all summer anglers on our coast. In addition, there are other ocean fisheries available in parts of the summer, including halibut, salmon, and tuna. Alternative B extends the higher bag limit a little bit later in the spring, with the change occurring on June 1st to a four fish bag limit. The thinking here is there's not much else to fish for until the summer, so keeping the bag limit high uh, later in the spring helps make bottom fishing more attractive to anglers during that time period. Alternatives C and D continue with the approach of a consistent bag limit year-round, which is what we have been doing up to this point. Alternative C is a five-fish year-round bag limit, and alternative D is a four-fish year-round bag limit. This is certainly less uh, complex for anglers to understand, um, but uh, particularly with alternative D, may not offer as much opportunity to harvest fish in the shoulder seasons as uh, A or B do. Alternative E is the one with the traditional bottom fish season closed part of the year from January through March and October through December and open the other six months from April through September with a five fish bag limit. And finally, alternative F is an opposite approach from A and B with a lower bag limit of three fish in the winter and a higher bag limit of five in the summer. The rationale behind this uh, alternative is to put a higher bag limit when most people are fishing and <clears throat> keeping the the more painfully low bag limit in the winter when there are fewer uh, anglers fishing for bottom fish. Again, the intent of all these alternatives is to best meet the needs of fishing communities as repeated in the bullets at the top of this slide. A big part of the story today is about risk tolerance, and I want to take a minute to describe how we thought about that. Staff focused on minimizing the risk of repeating this year's emergency closure or having to drop the bag limit so low in season that it is effectively not much different than a closure. Given the significant feedback we heard coastwide about the negative economic and social impacts of early closure this year, we felt this was the highest priority. However, we want to acknowledge that our analysis does not address different types of risk, 
such as the risk that a very low bag limit might deter anglers from coming to fish at all, which would bring its own negative economic impact. In addition, our analysis does not consider the possibility that we might create a change in fishing effort patterns through a new season structure and the effects that might have. For example, anglers concentrating more fishing effort during periods with a higher bag limit or during open periods if there's a closure part of the year, or targeting lingcod harder in the summer if the marine bag is low at that time, potentially leading to higher yellow eye rockfish impacts. These unknowns add to another type of risk in the form of greater uncertainty associated with our catch forecasts. One other point to make related to risk is that our modeling approach, which I'll describe next, only considers black rock fish. But we should keep in mind that other stocks are potentially limiting to our bottom fish fishery as well, as illustrated by the fact that we exceeded multiple recreational harvest guidelines this year. The approach of only modeling black rockfish is effective because any bag limit and season structure that works for that species also keeps our minor nearshore rockfish impacts under the harvest guideline. Yellow eye rockfish, because it's always prohibited and only encountered as incidental bycatch, is minimally affected by bag limits and managed more with depth and gear restrictions. And for cabazon, we simply prohibit retention when we're approaching the harvest guideline. Cabazon do have a 93% survival rate after catch and release. So we're using a new modeling approach to forecast bottom fish effort and catch for next year. Effort in terms of the number of bottom fish angler trips is by far the dominant factor that accounts for variation in catch in this fishery. Up until now, we have used a rolling three-year average number of angler trips as the input and a model that produced a point estimate for black rockfish or other species catch. This approach is solid, but it doesn't do a great job at envisioning effort at a level higher than seen in previous years. Uh, in addition, a point estimate uh, doesn't do a great job conveying the potential range of catch or the uncertainty associated with it. For next year, we've changed to using the effort seen in 2017 as the input for a base case model. We're using a method that produces a range of potential catch that better represents the probability of where we might end up. We've also incorporated two additional cases to bracket the base, one in which we assume 10% more effort than in 2017 and one with 10% less. Oops, sorry. <laughs> this represents roughly the average interannual variability. There we go. Um, in recent years, although it is... Um, it, the changes between years has been greater than 10% on some occasions. For reference, to compare the new approach to the old one, we found that the midpoint of the new base case range of black rockfish catch <clears throat> at the end of the season is approximately 7 to 8% higher than the point estimate produced by the old three-year average. We feel the 2018 model is slightly more conservative and is a better buffer against the risk of an early closure. And that's an important uh, assumption to keep in mind. This is a visual representation of the output of the new modeling approach, showing predicted black rockfish catch as it accumulates over the course of a year. There are a series of these in the agenda item summary, one for each staff alternative. And I'll walk through this example on screen. The dark gray shading in the center represents the base case prediction, which means total recreational black rockfish impacts, assuming that we see the same number of uh, angler trips in 2018 that occurred in 2017, um, and that assumption um, also assuming that we remained open for the entire year and continued on the trajectory we had been. The lighter shading in the top of the elongated tornado there represents uh, the range assuming 10% more effort than in 2017, and the bottom light shaded portion is the black rockfish catch forecast with 10% less effort. Within each case, so within each differently shaded area, the center of the range is more likely than the edges. Therefore, for example, if we happened to be spot on with a prediction that 2018 effort is the same as in 2017, it's most likely that at the end of the year, total black rockfish would be, uh, total black rockfish impacts would be in the center of the dark shaded area. On this graph, you can see that would put it just under the 2018 harvest guideline. 
although just barely. Therefore, we have characterized uh, this example as low risk. One benefit of this type of graph is that it allows you to see when during the year the harvest guideline might be reached. Another is that it allows you to visualize the alternative effort assumptions. As I touched on earlier, we did see a set of circumstances in 2017 that all came together to support a record high level of bottom fish effort, including weather, not so great salmon fishing, missing tuna, uh, and, and um, you know we may see all of those stars align again next year. We may not. We could see some reduction in black, uh, pardon me, in impacts on black rockfish uh, and other nearshore species. Also, if there's a long leader fishery with a higher bag limit that draws some anglers offshore and away from the traditional bottom fish fishery, away from those nearshore reefs. Since we haven't had a full long leader fishery before, it's difficult to predict how much effort could shift. We uh, did receive some helpful input from several charter operators and other individuals. We would make a very rough staff guesstimate that we might see approximately a 5% reduction uh, in nearshore catch on average across the fishery, so including both charter and private boats. Um, but I, I do want to underscore there that's very rough. And I think we will just have to wait and see what happens if we do have the long leader fishery next year. So staff put um, all the alternatives in the agenda item summary through the 2018 model. Uh, we also ran a, a number of additional scenarios that uh, I, I have information on. We see those uh, staff alternatives again here, ordered this time from top to bottom with least, from least to most risk. Each alternative was assigned uh, a general risk category based on the model results. But even within each category, there are some differences, so the order is meaningful. One point to keep in mind here also is that low risk does not mean zero risk. Given the variability in effort based on normal year-to-year -year factors plus possible uh, unintended changes in effort or targeting behavior with seasonally varying fisheries or uh, bag limits or closure options that I mentioned before, there certainly remains a considerable, considerable amount of uncertainty associated with our forecasts. Staff focused on a primary goal of minimizing the likelihood of in-season closure or severe bag limit reduction, and we recommend alternative A or another low-risk alternative. Alternative A provides a year-round season. It has a lower bag limit in summer. Again, some people we've heard from find this acceptable since there are other opportunities in the summer, but others have expressed very strong concerns that four is too low. I apologize for not being on top of clicking the slides here on time. This is the tornado graph for alternative A, as we've been calling them. Uh, this type of graph for all of the staff alternatives are in your agenda item summary, and I have slides available for each if you'd like to see them during discussion. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through each one of them during the main presentation, which is almost over. Alternative A uh, does fall out as low risk. This is another way to visualize each alternative and its relative risk. Ordered from least risk on the left to most risk on the right, the floating bars represent the base case range of predicted black rockfish impacts at the end of the full season. The units on the y-axis are metric tons, and the scale goes from 320 at the bottom of the picture to 480 at the top, with the 2018 harvest guideline of 381 drawn across the graph. The position of each bar gives you an idea of where it is on that scale. Again, the colored bars here are only the base case range, so to connect them back to the tornado graphs, they are only the dark gray shaded portion, which represents predicted catch of black rockfish next year if effort is the same as in 2017. The 10% lower and higher scenarios are not represented on this chart, but we can keep uh, the potential for less or more effort in mind for next year. One additional benefit of this visualization tool is that it allows you to see the differences between the modeled risk of the alternatives within each category. 
It's also worth noting that uh, in, in some cases, the differences between alternatives that are in different categories aren't so large. Uh, I note that E and B aren't that different from each other. Uh, A, E, and B, pardon me, aren't that different from each other, even though they're in different categories. So this wraps up my discussion of risk and specific alternatives and brings me to a, a few concluding slides. First, regardless of your action today, staff will be making some improvements in how quickly we turn around catch estimates next year and in how and when we communicate with anglers and our advisors uh, to better keep our finger on the pulse of the fishery and better inform the public. Um, we are already posting our catch estimates within one week of the end of each month. Um, this is one month earlier than we were before. It eliminates uh, a lag that previously had allowed us to complete some additional data processing and quality control checks, um, and we didn't post estimates until they were final. At this point, we feel it's in the public interest to post preliminary estimates as soon as we have them, with the understanding that there could be some changes as we finalize the data. We've looked back at what's happened in the past, and when there are changes, they've been very minor. In addition, <clears throat> we'll send a notice to a, uh, a notice to our recreational bottom fish email list when each update is posted on our website. We'll also consult our sport fishing advisory committee regularly with monthly updates through the spring and then more frequent updates in the summer as needed. We also will uh, consult the sport advisory committee if we see that we're tracking either higher or lower than expected to evaluate the need to make an in-season change. Uh, and I'll, I'll note that we can make a change either down or up uh, as appropriate to the bag limit or to other regulations. That brings me to a summary <coughs> of staff recommendations. In case you want to consider addressing the more straightforward issues together and then the marine fish bag limit separately, I've split them out that way on this slide. Our recommendations are reflected in the draft administrative rules. First, we recommend that you adopt the recreational and commercial harvest guidelines for 2018 the commercial nearshore bi-monthly trip limits, the dressed weight conversion factors for sharks and swordfish, the long leader gear definition, the long leader bag limit, and exception to the seasonal depth restriction allowing long leader fishing outside 40 fathoms from April through September. We also recommend that you adopt a year-round all-depth flatfish fishery by exempting flatfish from the seasonal depth restriction. I'll note this was not in the original draft OARs that po were posted on our website, <clears throat> although it is uh, covered by the rulemaking notice, and you should have a supplemental version today showing the proposed uh, rule language for allowing the flatfish fishing at all depths. Then the staff recommendation for the marine fish bag limit is alternative A or another low risk alternative, and I put several considerations for that on the, the final slide. This is just a collection of a few key points from the discussion of bag limits and season duration in this presentation. The goals that framed our development of alternatives were to avoid an early closure, keep the bag limit high enough to attract anglers, and provide bottom fish opportunity throughout the year. Balancing these competing goals as the fishing effort grows or even just remains as high as it has in recent years is the crux of the challenge. And just a few reminders. Because the fishery starts moving so fast in the summer, especially July and August, it's hard to just tap the brakes and make a modest adjustment in the bag limit to keep the season open all year. Finally, we think we can predict what will happen if we stick with the approach of a full year season and a constant bag limit across the year as we have in the past. And that ability to uh, forecast and predict with uh, some, some current level of accuracy does have some benefit. However, it is increasingly challenging to meet the fishing community's diverse needs with that structure. It could be time to at least begin consideration of a different approach, such as a seasonally varying bag limit like the staff recommendation, or a season less than 12 months like our neighboring states have. Again, weighing some of the pros and cons here in terms of uh, more complex regulations with a varying bag limit and the um, uh, ability to provide opportunity for fisheries. 
And then I'll conclude by just bringing us back to the point that no matter what we do, there is uncertainty associated with any predictions we make of what will happen next year. And that uncertainty is probably greater the more we diverge from what we've done in the past in terms of regulations. And so we should perhaps be more uh, prepared to expect the unexpected. Thanks. That concludes my presentation. Be happy to answer questions. Do we have any? Yeah, Mr. Vice Chair, we have a lengthy list of uh, public commenters signed up. I believe there's about 35 individuals on the list. Uh, so we would want to begin expeditiously on this testimony and um, I believe save questions for Maggie for after public comments. Yep. Commissioners, um, rather than have a just uh, a break like we would, might normally have, let's just do it individually as you need to and we'll continue uh, going through the public testimony. 30 people, three minutes apiece, that's 90 minutes uh, without to and from, without questions from the thing. So we're gonna be here at least two hours on this subject. And the red light means stop, not... Well, the light isn't working. Light's not working. Oh, light's not working. Yeah, so I'll just uh, politely remind you when you're on a glide path to uh, ending your time, I might just uh, do a little tap. Okay, that's your red light. Okay, we'll call them up in uh, panels of four. Uh, John Sousa, Ben Mayhew, Steyer Godden, Joe Watkins. Warren Goddard, actually. Okay. That's what happens when you don't sign yourself in. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to compliment everyone for putting down their name and address. That's very really helpful. Steve Godin. Steve Godin? <laughs> Steve Godin, actually. Oh, is it? Is he still here? Steve Godin? Yeah, I think he took off, so. Okay. Well, we have to get his spot. All right. So don't state your address, but please state your name. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll start with John. My name is John Sousa. I thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my opinion. I am a sports fisherman, um, and I would like to voice my, uh, my support for option A. Uh, though any option that would keep the, uh, the season open all year is preferable to any option that would not, in my view, I have several reasons for my support of option A. First, giving fishermen uh, options all year supports the local economies, the co coastal communities. Local businesses take a hit when fishermen are not visiting the coast. Second, during the summer, fishermen have a few more options. There are tuna, halibut, and salmon, as well as near shore bottom fishing. Third, Keeping the limit a little higher in the off-season months of November through April will give fishermen more incentive to go to the coast during the non-peak tourist season, which will again help the local economy. My fourth reason and final one is a more personal one. I am a meat fisherman. Uh, I am not a wealthy person and um, I depend a little bit on this. If I go fishing, I need to come home with uh, enough meat to justify the expense. Otherwise, I simply don't go. Um, in the last 12 months, I've gone to the coast seven times. Um, and of those seven times, only three in the summer. And during those three times in the summer, I uh, was targeting ground fish only once. I would also uh, like to quickly state uh, my opinion on how you can help reduce the pressure on nearshore bottom fishing. Uh, I strongly support the long leader fishering, fishery with the 10 fish limit and I would encourage you to make that available as many months as possible. 
as it should result in some people opting to pay a little more to go out a little farther to bring home a little more fish. I heard 5% mentioned as a possibility. Um, I would suggest that that will probably grow because the people that I'm uh, in communication with, uh, with on message boards, uh, many of them are being very slow to get into that fishery, but they're very interested and in moving in that direction. I also strongly urge you to do everything you can to push for another yellow eye assessment. Not long ago, I think it was three years ago, it might have been two, uh, we could only keep a total of one canary rockfish. Then the following year, we were allowed to keep seven canary rockfish because it was determined that the previous assessments grossly underestimated the actual canary population. Regulations have themselves put undue pressure on nearshore bottom fishing by closing down deeper options. You're out of time, John. Okay, just because of the yellow eye assessment. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Ben Mayhew, and I would ask you to vote for option A. I would like to keep it open year-round. It gives us more opportunity to fish. Uh, I think that four fish is enough when you add a couple ink cod on it, but the main thing is we can go out fishing. And it just gives us more chances to go fishing when the ocean conditions allow. And the wintertime, we like to stay in closer because sometimes the weather's not so great. If some days the offshore fishery with the long leader would be fine, but other days not so fine. Thank you. Thank you. I want to modify our communication. One is start summing up <laughs> because you are in the uh, sum up zone. You have a minute left. And two is you're out of time. Okay? All right. I'm Lauren Goddard. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to, to testify, uh, Commissioner uh, and uh, Director and other commissioners, Chair and other commissioners. Uh, I represent the uh, Oregon Coast Charter Association. This is a, an organization that was recently formed, uh, last spring in fact, and uh, it represents charter offices, boat owners, captains, crew, and thousands of recreational fishermen who enjoy our services. When I say thousands of recreational fishermen, uh, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, out of my office alone, Dockside Charters last year, we uh, had 23,000 people go through our doors. And uh, that represents quite a bit of money that they bring to our coast. Um, we recently held a meeting regarding nearshore uh, reduced bag limits for our 2018 fishing season. Since there was not an overwhelming majority of opinion regarding decreased limits versus decreased season length, OCCA will not be forwarding a proposal to decrease the season length at this time. The one thing that we did all agree on was that we could not support a drastic cut in our bag limits and continue to operate profitably. The charter fishermen feel that even a six fish bag limit for 2018 will have a negative effect on our recreational fishermen and economy for the entire Oregon coast. We do know that a four or five fish bag limit, as the ODFW staff may recommend, carries the high risk that some charter businesses will fail. The good weather last year, along with poor salmon and tuna opportunities, resulted in more pressure on the rockfish than usual, much more. Normal weather patterns are very likely to mitigate these concerns next year. In addition, the probable implementation of the long leader gear fishery will greatly reduce pressure on the nearshore stocks. This fishery will have a 10 fa uh, fish bag limit that charter companies know they can easily sell to their customers. This was proven after the nearshore fishery closed mid-September and the long later fishery was opened by ODFW on October 1st of this year. ODFW will have the option to lower the nearshore rockfish limits in season if, if necessary, but still leave long later fishery open to the remainder of the season. Thank you. Uh, Lauren, I want to ask you a question. I, I understand uh, on this sign up, uh, uh, Dorinda. Uh, Dorinda? Yeah, is she here? 
She is. And, and she wants to testify? Correct. Okay, I'll call her up uh, a little later. Okay. I'm Joe Watkins. I'm uh, a six-pack operator and also a commercial fisherman uh, for rockfish out of Garibaldi. Um, I support the maximum bag limit that we can get um, for this rock fit for the fishery mostly for the charter guys I think that where we're at commercially it's really market driven we can catch more fish than we can sell at least that's my experience with with the commercial side of things but I think it's gonna be very difficult for these guys to sell a boat ticket for 105 bucks or so for four or five fish I think that's not going to work very well so whatever alternatives we can come up with and from what i've seen the best that i saw uh, on a staff recommendation would have been f i think that gave you guys five fish uh, may through august is that correct three fish in the winter time from garibaldi's standpoint most of the time we can't get out anyway in the winter months so that's all i have to say uh, commissioners, any any questions, comments? Okay, thank you for coming. Is this George Murdoch? Yeah, George. I had always also wished to testify on my own behalf as well as uh, for OCCA. I just testified. testified yeah. for OCCA. But we'll see. We got a long list. Here. Okay, next uh, panel, George Murdoch, Kyle Oban, Andy Martin, and Clarence Cole. I think George probably got on the wrong place. He's George, a guy from yeah. Pendleton. He's a he's on the wood plan. He's okay. Came to yeah, I wondered why Umatilla County was testifying. <laughs> okay, Andy Martin, Clarence Cole, Okay, so who do we have, Kyle? Yes, yeah, Travis, nice stutter, so bear with me a little bit here on my stutter. Um, but yeah, I'm Kyle Lovin. Hang, and hang on a sec, I gotta fill out the panel. Oh, sorry about that. Andy Martin, okay. Clarence Cole, in the room? Okay, Clarence is not here. Uh, Mike Brulet, Brulet? Is he gone? No, he's here, but Andy's going to represent him. Okay, all right. Derek Barkley. And Bra Bob Rob Genserek. That's not too bad, sir. Okay. Okay, let's start with you, Cobb. Okay, uh, yeah, and so which I'm in Brookings, Oregon here, and uh, I uh, and then we'll come here again, um, and I'm scared and confused again, um, and I think I'm scared of uh, is that what's going to happen next, and I'm confusing the data. I'm not sure if there's almost anyone in this room, um, you know, they can explain the data to me. Um, we haven't had a stock of, or, uh, there has been no stock assessment on black rockfish, and yet we're going to cut back. We had a stronger season in 2015, it just showed, um, and uh, yet it was completely shut down in Brookings, Oregon also. Um, we have absolutely no grounds. Of, outside of 40 fathoms, there's no grounds of rockfish, so that's all we have is near shore fishery. Um, they, and, so, and so we lost salmon. We have lost that on the near shore, and we had no options, and we had a fire. Um, so it was a heck of a year. Uh, so... I would ask to propose um, for a new stock assessment, and I'm not sure why we're voting on this right here, um, or like uh, we have got five options there. And I, I think any cutback now would be devastating. Um, our ability to adapt to as fishermen has been really good the past 10 years, but I think um, if we go to four rockfish or five, even six, I don't think we can adapt anymore. I actually know cripple us. Thanks a lot, you guys. Okay, thank you. Mr. Martin. My name is Andy Martin. I live in Brookings. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. 
a couple of things. Uh, in Brookings, we don't have a deep water fishery like the like some parts of the coast do. We have a near shore fishery. Uh, we don't have the reefs offshore to participate in the long leader fishery successfully and catch fish. Any limit less than five rockfish will hurt the sport fishing economy of the southern Oregon coast. People from Klamath Falls or Mefford or Bend aren't going to tow their boats to Brookings to fish for four fish or maybe even five fish, and they're not going to book charter trips. They're not going to stay in local motels or stay at RV parks. It's concerning that the department in giving you the options to consider doesn't allow you to offer the opportunity to have a sublimit for black rockfish and a higher limit that would allow us to target the, the other species, the canary rockfish, the blue rockfish. And instead, the, the, it's a management tool that's been taken away from you in this. Also, I think it's noteworthy to see that the effort in 2015 was or in 2016 was less than 2015 so by just going by august of this year and overreacting to drastic changes may not be necessary the um the season limits have worked in the past without going over the the limit and because of one month's effort that is extraordinarily high according to this data we shouldn't make drastic changes just off of one month thank you Mr. <laughs> Chair Finley, Director Melcher, uh, Commissioners. Uh, I favor uh, option A followed by option D, but that's not why I'm here today. I'm actually here. I submitted a five page written testimony, and I hope you have either looked at it or will look at it, and I'm just going to do a very brief summary of that. See, evidence of uh, commercial overfishing is pervasive for China rockfish and kelp greenling and in the commercial fishery section, uh, whether and other factors may influence these landings, but long-term landing data suggests a more fundamental problem. Apparent overfishing is directly linked to the commercial fixed gear black and blue rockfish fishery, and more specifically to the live fish portion of that fishery taking place south of Cape Arago. The National Marine Fisheries Service expects states to monitor catches at the stock specific level, and if overfishing of a particular component stock occurs on a regular basis, to remove that stock from the complex and manage it individually. And I understand that ODF and W does not like to remove fish from that minor rockfish uh, complex because if you do that and manage them on by species level, you can bump up against the quota for that species and end up closing all kinds of things. So I do understand that. I think what's needed here is a new paradigm that regional management for that fishery south of Cape Arago and particularly south of Cape Blanco should be managed at the species level and not north of there where that fishery doesn't occur. Species management for colored rockfish species, at least at the species level, and greenling on the southern Oregon coast fisheries south of Cape Ergo, uh, with appropriate allocation to provide a sustainable fishery, which is possibly one-sixth of the quota for the entire coast. Let me emphasize that this fishery and this overfishing is entirely the southern Oregon coast. 99% uh, of commercially caught China rockfish are caught south of Cape Arago. 99% of kelp greenling are caught south of Cape Arago. Uh, <clears throat> the pre there's precedent for regional management. Washington State regionally manages sport fishing, and they have nine separate regions that vary from the typical uh, limits that we use here in Oregon to no rockfish retention in the Straits of Juan de Fuca and the Southern <coughs> Sea. Uh, department needs to reevaluate management by landings. It's frequently the case that when landings are down for these minor fish, they increase the trip limits because they're trying to, I guess, reach a quota. Uh, you can't catch what isn't there. And in pages, and from pages five and six of the agenda summary, other nearshore rockfish are generally more valuable and targeted by a longer, larger number of commercial nearshore fishers than Blue and Deacon rockfish, if projections indicate a need to reduce monthly limits in season, the department strategy will be to reduce Blue and Deacon month by monthly limits first and only reduce other nearshore rockfish if reductions in Blue and Deacon rockfish by monthly limits appear to be insufficient to achieve harvest objectives. There's several fundamental issues with that strategy. Uh, first of all, 
the, all of the uh, black and blue rockfish fishermen north of Cape Arago would then have their limits reduced because none of them, well, actually I think there's four permits with an endorsement. All the rest have no endorsement. They're not allowed to keep those other fish. So their limits are essentially reduced. Uh, the other new near shore rockfish is a euphemism for the colored rockfish, China quillback and copper, the very fish for which are the most vulnerable and are apparently being overfished. Reductions in blue and deacon rockfish harvest to favor colored rockfish encourages unnecessary bycatch wastage. These species are much more numerous than the colored rockfish uh, and they are not inherently less valuable but a food fish but suffer high mortality in the fishing process. Approximately 4% are landed live and the rest are landed dead. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Barkley. Rob Gonzork, Basin Tackle, Charleston, Oregon. Uh, I'd like to thank you for this time afforded to us to speak before this esteemed council. While I cannot speak to all anglers and businesses along the south coast, I have been asked by many to represent them here today, particularly in my community. Uh, my goal here today is simple, is to vocalize and demonstrate the cost of the decisions that are made by this body and this agency and to show the repercussions of same. Uh, this unexpected closure this year of this recreational ground fishery uh, has been devastating to my business, me personally and to the three employees I had to let go. Um, that's three jobs in an economically depressed region and three jobs that may or may not become available again. Productivity, opportunity, and means of self-sufficiency were dashed away in a moment. We've had an extremely high rate of unemployment in our region, and every job lost is a tragedy and a shame. But my story is not unique. Um, fish markets that fillet fish, uh, tackle shops, hotels, motels, gas stations, restaurants, and of course charter services, as they are greatly represented here today, are suffering greatly due to this closure. Now, this is not hyperbole. These situations are bleak and real. We understand there's a myriad of reasons for these closures, and the complexities are not lost on us. It's difficult, however, not to ultimately lay the blame at the feet of the ODFW. And perhaps I'm wrong, but I've always felt that the state agencies that reg regulate and manage our resources are to do so for us, for we the people. But at this time, many of us do not feel this is the case, unfortunately. Uh, we understand the Magnuson Stevens Act along with the PFMC control much of what we do, but it feels as if the regulation or the regulatory bodies of the state of Oregon uh, kind of go along without protest or consideration for our well-being, the well-being of the citizens. And there's no apparent pushback or resistance on our behalf. And there is case in point for Oregon pushing back. Um, to be certain, uh, marijuana laws, that, that's a federal, uh, it's a federal crime, yet Oregon legalized it for what they thought was the better good of the people. It contravenes all federal law, yet something as basic and good and wholesome as recreational fishing seems not to garner as much attention or consideration. And it kind of leaves us feeling like no one in our government advocates for us. We need to talk about data collection methods. Uh, we need to talk about fish stock assessments and how accurate or inaccurate they may be and possible processes and procedures to make them inherently more accurate. But this is neither the time nor place or venue uh, to address this. And please don't understand me when I, when I say these things. I, I don't want to see our resource depleted. We have to be good stewards of it. We have to make sure these things are, are, are kept healthy. And fishing is not just about businesses and dollars. It's not just a hobby or a way to kill time. It is much more. It's a way of life that makes us the men and women we are today. It's a cultural definition of who we are. And through fishing with friends and family, through the sharing of food and experiences, it greatly defines us, not just as a culture, but as a country. And the reduction or removal of these outdoor pursuits jeopardizes that culture greatly. I'd like to thank you for your time, your consideration, and your volunteer service to the positions held here. Um, again, I, I don't like any of the options. I don't know why we can't keep the status quo and just maintain it. Last year, this past year, was a perfect storm of bad to make this year happen. And it just seems, it is kind of, I hate using the term knee-jerk, but it does feel like a knee-jerk reaction to, um, to that one-time perfect storm. But again, thank you so much for your consideration. Thank, uh, thank you. Any questions or comments? Commissioner Anderson. Thank you, Chair Finley. I just want to make a comment just very <laughs> briefly to address Kyle and some of the other concerns that um, this is based on a stock assessment, just so that you know you had said that you didn't think that it was. And this isn't a question because mm -hmm. we've got a lot of public mm -hmm. testimony. So I want you to know it's based on a stock assessment. The number of fish is set and constrained by the federal government. So some of the disagreements that we may have about the data that goes into the stock assessment or the model that's used is beyond the purview of this commission. So if you don't see that addressed today in what we can decide, it's because we don't have the authority to do so. So I just want to make that clear before we move on. No questions, though. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, panel.
called Derek Barclay before. I am Derek Barclay. You are? Okay. <laughs> How's Thank it? you. Thank you. Oka and Lauren, is it Bodard or Badard? That was for the OCCA one that, that he already read. Okay. That, that was the OCCA, the Oka. Okay. Uh, Mike Sorensen, Dan Zimmerman, Mark Kaleo, Mark Lotus. Mark Lotus, that's who, what it is. <coughs> and Linda Buell. Okay, thank you. Tamara Mantner. Okay. Start with you, Mike. Chairman, uh, Commissioners and Director uh, Melcher, thank you for this opportunity for uh, letting us testify and hearing our comments. Uh, my name is Mike Sorensen. I've been a charter captain off the Central Oregon Coast for 35 years. I'm also a member of the Sports Advisory Subpanel, or the Salmon uh, Panel for the PFMC. I'm also on your uh, Sports Advisory Committee for ODF and W, and also the president of. Uh, the, the uh, Oregon Charter Association. I'd like to, to uh, again thank you guys for listening to us and uh, to take all our comments into consideration. <clears throat> the way that I feel that uh, this has happened this year for our closure was the perfect storm. There's a lot of stuff that, that uh, came together all at one time to give us this closure that we had. Like I said, I've been doing this for 35 years. Of that 35 years, we've been shut down twice in those 35 years, this being the second one. The first time ODF and W put together the SAC, the Sports Advisory Committee, we were advised on a lot of stuff during the years. This year, we were led aside, uh, just like you were told earlier by your staff, for different reasons, and it resulted in us closing down. Staff has already said that they're going to make different arrangements on that and keep us informed monthly, which I believe last year until this closure we were uh, informed maybe three times, four times. So I thank the staff for, for taking that into consideration. The perfect storm I was talking about is, is one, our, uh, the salmon fishery that has been slow. Until September where we had four, five, six days of fishing because it was really good fishing, but unfortunately we reached our quota and had to be shut down. Our tuna fishery, my wife fillets fish uh, out of South Beach Marina, Newport Marina. Normally on a normal year, she fillets over 2,000 tuna during the season. This year out in Newport, she filleted less than 100. People are gonna go fishing. If they can't fish for tuna because they're not there, they're gonna go something else and they went on bottom fishing trips, which are bottom fishing this year. Normally in the summertime, it kind of slows down over the years. This year, for some reason, it just kept going. The fish bit all year long. People that didn't know what they were doing went out and, and set up on fish, set up on other boats, and caught fish. There was lots of them out there and lots of them biting. Another thing for the perfect storm. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons this is going on. I just, uh, I am in a proposal of doing a six fish. I think with the staff and your sports advisory committee, we can uh, maintain that. And if we do have to do a reduction in uh, quota for, uh, for limits, we can do that. Uh, if not, I would rather see a six, five, six. I think that if we go down to as low as four, I think that is going to uh, set unprecedents that we don't need. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. I'm Dan Zimmerman. I'm an independent charter boat operator out of Depot Bay. Um, as Mike, I've been doing it for 35 years out of Depot Bay, same port. I support everything he said, saved one, and that would be I'd like to see things stay status quo within season adjustments. Um, like he said, uh, and I won't keep repeating him, but I have nothing else to go on at this point. Um, 
true that bottom fishing usually slows way down in the summertime. But um, I'm one that uh, has, over the last few years, tried to diverse and fish for other species other than black rockfish. We know where they are. We know they're easy to catch. We all move around from place to place to place. We don't want to fish out any, any we don't want to put ourselves out of business. So I'm just going to be supportive of, of, of status quo with an in-season adjustment. And at least if we have some forewarning, we can parlay that over to our customers and, and be prepared instead of saying sorry. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Lotus. Yes, Mark Lotus, Gold Beach. We run a two-boat family charter boat operation there. We would vote for five fish uh, based on the fact that there probably is some concern, definitely so, for uh, overfishing of the quota. But we think that a five fish would allow us to go through the season. Uh, anything less than that, would uh, we would feel would see a huge pushback in regards to customers, in regards to needing more fish and that to justify a trip, as a lot of people have already said. Uh, a lot of things, like the other gentlemen have said, came to part this summer to kind of all fall into place, and we think that a big drastic change uh, with just one evidence of that is probably unnecessary right now. So five fish for the season and see where that takes us. Thank you. Okay. Tamara? <clears throat> Hi, my name is Tamara Mountner. Um, thank you, commissioners, for the opportunity. Um, I... My husband and I own a charter fishing business in Garibaldi, which is, if you have, haven't been there, a very small, small town on the coast. I'm a third generation charter boat owner and captain. And this summer, our charter boats took out over 7,000 recreational fishermen. So if you wouldn't mind um, imagining 6,999 other people right next to me, that'd be great. Uh, <clears throat> so, excuse me, I'm a little nervous, but... Um, I know you've heard from a lot of fishermen that that the draw of fishermen to our communities is extremely important to our economy. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea. According to some numbers that I got from the Visit Tillamook Coast, um, I, I got some of their spending numbers. Um, if every one of my personal customers from last year came to Garibaldi by themselves just for one day, um, that this summer, um, it reflects about a $1 million extra spending in our community. And, and that's pretty big for a small community. If, if they brought their families, which a lot of them do, uh, that number rises to $2 million. And if even half of those people spent the night, um, it's two and a half, possibly even $3 million in our small community. So that's real money, and that's supporting real families. <clears throat> so multiply that by all the charter operators you're hearing from here and you get an idea of how important this is to us. Um, the commission, I believe, must consider this impact. Um, a predetermined low bag limit of four or five fish, that's a very big risk to us. You'll see low risk, low risk, moderate risk. You can pretty much invert that, and everything that says low risk to the ODFW is going to be a high risk that one of us charter operators is going to go out of business. <clears throat> uh, lower okay thank you a low bag limit is bad publicity for the Oregon coast um, visitors who make are making their plans now or even in the spring they're they're planning on where to go if they see that there's a four or five fish bag limit they're gonna plan to go elsewhere uh, Washington California higher bag limits lower license prices um, it's damaging to the brand of the Oregon coast which is one of the greatest places to go and fish and that that damage is going to last, not just this year. Uh, it's, it's going to make people think that our fish stocks are in trouble when really the opposite is true. So I recommend keeping the status quo or at least six fish uh, within season changes. Otherwise, I do believe that small businesses will be at risk for failure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioners? <laughs> Okay, thank you for coming. Uh, Chair Finley, uh, <clears throat> I would just like to add one thing that I feel is real important. When uh, <clears throat> the PFMC did the long leader uh, study offshore, I was part of that study. Uh -huh. And I know staff said that they thought that it's going to be like 5%. And with the people that I took out, 
I took out close to 15 trips with 15 people on them each time, and everybody's been calling us waiting for this to get in, to in, in place. So I think that that number is going to be plus 10 percent, and I think it's going to take a huge pressure off our nearshore reefs. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming. Mr. Buell, Mick Buell, uh, Jurgen and Tyler Turner. You're both coming up? Okay. And uh, Dorinda Goddard. Okay. Come on back up, Lauren. Thank you. Okay. I'll start with you, Mr. Buell. Okay. Um, I'm Mick Buell. Uh, you just heard from my daughter, Tamara, and I have to agree with everything that she said. Uh, I, I operate one of the boats out of our office. And last year we took out about a little over 2,000 people on just that one boat. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to start out by saying that there is some good news coming up. Uh, the quotas for uh, yellow eye rockfish and black rockfish, well, Yellow eye, the quotas are going to go up. Black rockfish are probably going to be get get a relief by the blue rockfish uh, being entered into the same group. So uh, it's it's likely that the uh, quotas are going to become less restrictive. Not next year, unfortunately, <clears throat> but the year after. So anyway, uh, good news there and. Uh, because of, of this, I'd like to urge you, and, and other reasons that other people have said, urge you to not to make drastic changes in the bag limits that might cause people to vacation elsewhere next year. Um, a reduction to four or five fish bag limit could be the, the last straw for some businesses. I'm, I'm sure that we can get through the season, uh, particularly if we get the long leader fishing that we can get through the season without exceeding our quota. Um, the highest uh, bag limit that we could have would be the best and then make reductions if necessary during the season. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the Turners, you're good. Yes, thank you very much for your time. Um, my name is Jurgen Turner. I have the Jarbo Tackle Buster out of Depot Bay. I've been a skipper 38 years this year. I operate through Dockside Charters, and uh, I do represent roughly close to 4,000 customers, licensed customers that did go fishing aboard our boats this year. Without going into to um, repeating too much of what everyone else has said, I'd like to support our association and their recommendations. I think it's important to keep for uh, the coast is an open fishery year round. I started fishing in 1980 uh, with year round fishing and it's expanded over the years. It started out slow that way, but now everybody uh, comes down and expects to go out year round fishing. We have people coming down, motels, restaurants, everybody's full during the weekends all year long. Also too, uh, in consideration in some of this is also the other species of fish that we catch throughout the summer. We make a big effort to catch uh, canary rockfish, which I haven't heard too much about yet today. Um, I'll tell. My son Tyler will elaborate on that. And uh, yellowtail rockfish, not only in the long leader fishery, but during the summer months uh, ourselves, we make a great effort to fish as deep as we can to catch the other species of fish and leaving black rockfish only to fill in when we have to or when it's necessary or when it's too rough to fish offshore. But back to um, the season, the quotas, um, keeping it as, as high as feasible and keeping it open year round in 
the majority of the charter businesses, we need that. Thank you. Okay, Tyler. Yeah, thank you for your time, guys. Uh, my name is Tyler Turner, and uh, suggest a status quo bag limit for 2018 with the in-season monitoring of ODF and W. In-season adjustments did not happen 2017 uh, to regard uh, with regard to the anomaly or perfect storm, as everybody's referring to, uh, that took place. Agreeing to a four fish uh, rockfish bag limit during our peak season would be a complete uh, failure, especially knowing uh, there are under other abundant species of rockfish we're able to uh, retain during our inshore fishery. And uh, also the marketability to potential customers uh, would be extremely low. No one knows what's going to happen in 2018, so we feel the right thing to do is to have a status quo bag limit and to make proper and reasonable uh, in-season adjustments when necessary. That's all I have on that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Lauren. Yep. Lauren. 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 Lauren's here in her stead. Oh, that's um, <clears throat> thanks again. Uh, Dorinda, my wife, and I were back in uh, D.C., Washington, D.C., the first week of November. While we were there, we met uh, with Senators Merkley and Wyden and Representatives Schrader and uh, Walden. And our purpose in meeting with them was to express our concerns with the lack of action from nymphs on the long leader fishery. They are all very well aware of what's going on with that long leader fishery, how successful it was. They're aware that ODFW literally put a complete package into the hands of nymphs. All they have to do is the rulemaking on it. So uh, we've made as big a push as we can uh, with our congressional delegation to see that that happens in a very timely manner. And I heard it expressed earlier uh, during the testimony that uh, they fully expected that to happen prior to uh, April 1st, if not before the end of this year. And uh, the pressure is being put on NIMPS to perform, and it's just about time. Now, um, as far as uh, other options, I'm surprised. Uh, what I support is a, a status quo fishery, seven rockfish uh, per day with a uh, in-season adjustment if necessary. But what surprises me is that I've only heard one end other individual make any comments about a sub-bag limit. We can have a sub-bag limit of four rockfish, four black rockfish, where we already have a lot of other sub-bag limits. And uh, I get a lot of entertainment out of trying to explain to people what the sub-bag limits are when they call and they don't have a clue. And you tell them, well, you know, on a good day, you can catch seven canary rockfish. Uh, other times, you can catch up to seven canaries, you can catch as many as six blacks, you can have as many as four blues or deacons, you can have one cabazon after July 1st, or seven kelp greenling. And it's amusing to see their eyes roll back in their heads, but that is a reasonable option to present as a four fish sub bag limit for black rockfish. That gets us down under the, uh, the threshold there, according to ODFW's numbers, and is not going to uh, constrain us in that way because there are other fish that we can catch that, uh, to fill out that bag limit of seven. Uh, ad additionally, uh, I'd like you to bear in mind that we're being pushed into a corner where we've got the, uh, the 30 fathom restriction with the RCA out there at 30 fathoms. We've got five marine reserves spread out throughout the state. Incidentally, three of those are in Lincoln County. Two of them bracket Depot Bay. And yet, we get no benefit from those. We've given up 30% of our rockfish footprint that we typically fish from year-round, and yet 
we get no benefit from that. You're out of time, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners. Commissioner Weber. I, I guess I, I'm listening to everybody, and my ideas are that we have a finite number of fish that we can catch, and it's whether we want to fish all year long or we want to have high bag limits for a shorter period. And I'm not really hearing that addressed. I guess there's some people saying high limit and then we make an in-season adjustment, which is what we did last year. No, we, we closed no, it. No, sir. Come on. We didn't do that. But didn't we close it? No. No, we what, didn't. What happened? We That's what, days that was an in-season adjustment. Well, is it not an adjustment or not? Well, I guess we would have to redefine an in-season adjustment. I, I, okay, but that's what that was. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we're going to get to, you know, are we going to fish all year long or do you want to have a high limit? Because I think you can't have both. He, what he said about the... Sub bag limit would answer the whole thing, but nobody seems to be considering it. We're not taking into account the abundance of canary and yellowtail rockfish as well into near the shore. near shore. We're just talking about blacks here, and that's the issue. Okay. We had a six bag sub bag limit last year. We had we previously had last year a six black rockfish sub bag limit. Of the seven. Of the seven rockfish. Okay, we can ask staff. And it would be certainly reasonable to have a four black rockfish sub bag limit of that seven fish bag limit total. Okay, well, we need to keep going now. You've answered yes. my question. Okay. Okay, thank you. Huh? Jack Graven, Lars Robeson, Ed Keen, and Joe Okenfels. Jack, Jack Graven, yes. Lars Robeson, and Joe. Ed, Ed Keen. I'm Joe. Okay, you're Joe. Ed Keen is, there he is. Okay, start with you, Jack. Uh, hello, my name is Jack Craven. I have Yukon Bay Charters down in Newport, Oregon. I'm a third generation charter fisherman. Uh, this will be the 20th year in business. I'm a member of the OCCA. Um, as to your comment, Mr. Weber, um, I do have some points I'd like to bring up. I am support of a status quo. Um, I really do believe that through some changes that the charter fishing community will enact that we can reduce the number of fish caught and help come in for a year-round fishery. And some of those things we can do would be to stop catching crew fish, as some crews do, reducing the number of fish they catch per day, would, which when they do over and over, adds up quite a bit. We also will start to focus on giving people a better experience and less focus on limits. So in the past, people would hook a fish, hand a seasick person the rod, have them land, land it so everybody can get a limit. That behavior will stop. Uh, we're also going to focus heavily on that offshore long leader fishery to give people a better benefit for their money as best we can. My office plans to do that. I know many offices plan on doing that. Uh, also, with an increased license fee, including 12-year-olds having to pay $20 for a one-day license, you will see fewer fishermen, even if we are status quo. Families will drop out. We've already seen kickback on that issue. Um, like people have said, this was the perfect storm for 2017. There's nothing to say that we won't catch salmon next year or that the tune won't come back or that the nearshore halibut fishery remains open longer. And also, with the addition of that all-depth flatfish fishery, I at least plan on exploring options for petroleum sole, sand dabs, and other flatfish that people seem to respond to very well. Uh, I think with these changes throughout the charter fleet, you will see a significant shift, especially with that long leader fishery, and especially with our own behaviors, making sure that people have fun first and worry about catching fish for everybody only if they want to, and encourage them to take only what they want. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Mr. Robeson. Uh, thank you, uh, Lars Robeson, uh, charter skipper all my life here in Depot Bay, yeah. <clears throat> member of the Oregon Coast Charter Boat Association, uh, Sport Advisory Council. I'd like to inform you guys of what's been happening out there in the offshore long leader fishery, which I've been a part of since it was in an experimental stage, thanks to John Holloway. And it has proven to be an extremely clean fishery. All fall long, <clears throat> here we have uh, not caught any yellow eye or lingcod, and we've been fishing about 85 fathoms. And our customers responding well to the big size of rockfish and the 10. And I have also been talking to them about reduced bags inshore, and they say, well, you know, the fish inshore are a lot smaller if there's only like four, you know, we really don't want to do it. Plus the added price of the uh, $20.75, what is it, one day license <clears throat> is just up a couple bucks, but then the crab license on top of that is uh, still adding dollars. So you're looking at, uh, for a person to go fishing just on the five hour is uh, about $120, $130. You know, if you get that down to four fish, that's not looking so good. But, you know, they can also catch two lingcod. But I, I am supporting of a uh, uh, status quo uh, amount of fish, but also a sub bag of inshore of four black rockfish. Because we know there's a lot of fish out there. Uh, uh, they said we probably would never catch our canary rockfish quota at some meetings that we've had. So I am in support of, that, of the uh, seven fish and an inshore in-season adjustment and having the Fish and Wildlife crew in Newport, which they've said they would do, would keep Got us better informed. Left. Last year it was just, oh, it's going to be over with. You know, how did that happen? You know, it, it surprised everybody, as you know. And I have no more to say that's already been said. Thank you. No, no, you still have more time. Oh, I could tell you a story. Not <laughs> is, is, you have a minute left. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, that's... Uh, that's what I think. I'm just really excited about the offshore uh, long leader fishery. So, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Keene. Uh, my name is Edmund Keene. Um, I represent uh, a group called Ocean. I've appeared before this panel on a number of occasions. Uh, for those of us who, who are not familiar with our group, uh, we are the folks who uh, give away uh, descender devices. We've been doing that long before ODFW or anybody in the state did. Uh, personally, this year, I've sent out over 800 of those all over the country. Um, Oregon and our group have become a model nationally and I've even uh, sent some of these things internationally uh, as far as Stockholm, Sweden. So as a sport fisherman, it's important to me that all of the people who've asked us for these devices have an opportunity to fish uh, for fish year round. A lot of people who uh, have small boats and most uh, of us sport fishermen don't have large boats. We can't get out in uh, November and December or whatnot to reach these long line fish. Uh, it would be my opinion that the 10 fish bag limit for long line is probably more fish than should be taken. How long is that going to be sustained? I would vote for uh, any option that has a low uh, percentage to be closed uh, some part of the year. Uh, you got a minute left. Okay. Uh, I would think that option uh, A, option D, option F, or option C uh, in that order 
would be what I would recommend. If ODFW is saying in the peak time frame that fish are being caught, that five fish are what they would recommend, um, if we can keep that five fish thing, um, I, yeah, I would recommend that. Thank you. Ockton, Mr. J Ockton Mr. Oakenfels. Oakenfels? Oakenfels, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm Joe Oakenfels. Thank you, commissioners. Um, many things have been said that I would like to say. One of the things that uh, I want to thank you for is being ahead of me. I, I was going to inform you that as far as a person that's been involved in the fisheries myself for 35 years out of Garibaldi, um, uh, have fished in the wintertime, have fished in the summertime. Uh, in, 2000, in 2004, uh, we started working with the research and development of the descending device. Industry generated. We started doing that. Uh, nobody, nobody asked us to. We started doing it. And it, today it is one of the descending devices that Oregon Fish and Wildlife hands out. And so anyway, I just wanted to say that as from a position of where I'm coming from in regards to any of the comments that I have say. I do care about the fisheries. I do care about the black rockfish. One of the things as uh, Commissioner Anderson um, referred to is the stock assessments. Yeah, it seems like the elephant in the room is that there's the stock assessment. But you can, from the stock assessment, from my anecdotal evidence, from what I see daily, is that the stock assessment of black rockfish is not accurate. I can go to your staff and I can interact with your staff and I can say, you know, what do you think? They agree that the stock assessment is not accurate. If the stock assessment was accurate, we would not be having this conversation. We would not have to be altering the, the seasons. So, I say that to Commissioner Weber in regards to your, this, this conversation wouldn't be happening. So it's like, the, so I don't have a solution, but I do, have, I do offer something up that does need a solution, and that is the stock assessment. The stock assessment of black rockfish is inaccurate. You know, I know, the staff knows, thank you very much, that is not accurate. And we're having these conversations. People are putting in great efforts. The staff is doing great work to make it balanced, to make the numbers work. But nobody wants to talk about that it's not accurate. I support a sub bag limit for the for the to go okay, so the second that's for the reality, the second reality, there's the reality of the stock assessment that's that that you have to operate off of. And then there's the reality of what's real. What we see, what your staff knows. Thank you. I think I've made my point. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners? Okay. I just have a, a little question here. Mr. Robison. Yes. Did you hear what Mr. Craven said about his four or five recommendations? He's sitting next to you. Yeah. What do you think of them? You want to repeat them? That we would not take crew limits every time we can get them, that we would encourage people to take what they want, take what they need, instead of take everything they can get. That if somebody is seasick and not fishing, that we do not break Absolutely. ourselves trying as hard as we can to catch them in limited fish that they can anecdotally land. That we take people out and focus on fun and not on fish. Yeah, I, I, think, that's, I think that's a great idea, but it's also the you know, Oregon law that uh, you need to be in control of that fish bringing it over the rail. Yes, and people will not be catching fish they're not fishing. That's what I'm saying. Correct, yeah. No, I agree with him. Just curious. All right, anything else? Thank you very much, panel. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kelly uh, Barnett, I believe. Rod Harder. John Holloway and Ron Mason. We'll start with you, Mr. Barnett. 
Thank you very much, uh, Commission. It's, uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak. I am a commercial fisherman. I am a commercial seafood processor. I'm a recreational seafood processor. I am a purchaser of uh, commercial seafood as well as a uh, owner of a black rock fish permit for commercially. So there's a lot of things that I represent here. Um, I cannot afford any reduction in the bag limits. It's hard enough for me to sell my services now with the seven bag, with seven fish in order. I've recently had to raise my prices to $10 per limit for rockfish filleting uh, to cover my expenses. My expenses won't go down if the quota goes down but I'm certainly not going to be able to charge $10 to fillet four fish. People are not going to go for that. Uh, I would like to continue a little bit with Mr. Okenfell's um, <clears throat> line of logic of fighting the science that is constraining us. Um, we've been constrained by decades by the addition of three words to the Magnuson-Stevens Act during the Clinton administration, that is best available science, and that is what's caused the environmental groups and others to file lawsuits against the Pacific Fisheries Management Council, which now causes our fisheries to be managed by fear of lawsuit rather than to be managed by logistics and common thinking, um, common sense thinking. I think what we need to do as a commission is to push our congressional delegation into a reauthorization of the Magnuson Act that takes those words out. The Forest Practices Act needs to be looked at as well. It has the same three words. Uh, because we have been constrained by decades now of having to live with bad science being used to make rules. Everybody knows that the stock assessments are wrong. And one more thing before my time runs out, I'd really like the scientific community to stop trying to figure out how many fish there were before God got here. They can't do it. And the re what they're using is to try to figure it out is lies. They're using World War II sales data to the Army and they're using restaurant menus and chefs descriptions of what they were selling back in the early days. That's no way. You can't do it that way. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. My name is Rod Harder, I'm Director Melcher, Chair Penley, Commissioners, thank you for allowing me to be here today. I came uh, with the idea I was going to hold my nose and vote for the staff proposal, and I think I'm still going to do that. However, I had one thing in that uh, <clears throat> it comes out to 60 fish, and anyone that comes out to five, anyone that comes out to 60 would be acceptable too, and I think that was F, that was five fish a month. Uh, <clears throat> I'm very nervous about leaving uh, the status quo and reducing the numbers of fish in the middle of the season. We've been there, we did that, and until I see staff's proposal come up with something really, really solid, that makes me nervous to do it that way. I, I'm a big supporter of the long, I'm a volunteer for Ocean, the same as Ed, Ed uh, was before, working on the Descender program. But I'm a huge fan of the, off, the uh, long leader offshore fishery. And I would love to have that continue. The thing we have to remember is that people with small boats like I have, we can't do that in the winter. Probably we can fish maybe 20% of the number of days that the charters can fish just because of boat size. But that's a great thing. I think it is going to reduce uh, the intake of fish inshore. But I think we also have to see that proven. And we'll give that another year, or should give it another year. My main concern is that we don't pull the plug 
in September and tell us we can't fish anymore. Short and sweet, thank you very much for letting me appear. Mr. Harder. <clears throat> Mr. Holloway. Thank you, Chair Finley, Director Melcher, Commissioners. My name is John Holloway. I represent Recreational Fishing Alliance, Oregon Chapter, and we represent both private and charter anglers, or charter operators. And I also serve as the chairman of the Ground Fish Advisory Panel for the Pacific Fishery Management Council. And um, I'm going to recommend a status quo as a starting point. I think it's a viable approach. I also believe that it can be adjusted in season and I trust 100% Marine Resources Program personnel to make those determinations. And many commercial fisheries are managed in season every year. And they make adjustments as the, as the information becomes available and the catch data. And I also don't think that we're going to have a season in 2018, like we did uh, in 17. We also are likely to have the long leader fishery. I know because I've been working on it for 10 years. And we are now, the long leader fishery has been approved by NIMS West Coast Region. It has moved from there. It has gone to NOAA Fisheries in Silver Springs, and it requires approval of National Marine Fisheries Service and Commerce, and then it can go into the federal record. And I've been watching the federal record. I just checked it. It's not there yet. <coughs> okay. And we also have, I believe, that it will be in place, and I believe it'll make a huge difference. And we have people back in D.C., including commercial fishing sectors, lobbying for a recreational opportunity, as well as we have a letter from the Oregon Congressional Delegation asking for it to be done, which is attached to my printed testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Good Mason. afternoon. My name is Ron Mason. I'm a recreational angler. I have my own boat. Um, I have several comments for you, and I'll try to get through them fairly quickly. First, uh, I think I didn't know what it was, so I asked Jack Craven. Uh, I'm a recreational fisherman, as I said, but I know several of the charters and friends with a bunch of them. And they told me today that a uh, one-day license is $20 or $20.50, and I'm really glad that the people that go with me or Oregon residents and have a year-long license because I think that's utterly ridiculous. It shouldn't be any more than $10 in my opinion. And again, I have no personal interest in that. People that go with me all are Oregon residents and they have a year-long license. Um, $20 to fish for one day is too much. If you look at that, if somebody fished 10 days, they paid way more than for a license. It's just wrong. <clears throat> Um, I am for a year-long season. I think that's the most important decision for the recreational fishermen that can come out of today. I'd like you to be able to find something, I don't know what it would be, that would also allow the charters to operate during the year. I think we're putting a lot of faith in the feds approving the long leader fishery. If they do that, that will take a tremendous amount of pressure off. Um, the, I'm on the sports advisory committee and one of the things that uh, Maggie said that they would do is uh, the week after a month ends, by the end of the week after the month, they would have a report out. Um, I've told her, and I several times, uh, I think that they should look at the data that is collected weekly. That data is sent weekly back to the MRP office in Newport. I happen to be friends with the person that runs the port sampler program, AKA the fish checker program and the data comes back weekly, they have to clean it up and do things, but in my opinion, 
They should not wait till the end of the month, in particular during the summer when effort is high. They should be looking at that data at the end of every week when they get it. They should get it cleaned up and check it so they can see what the trends are. Certainly, if you go with something like the status quo for next year, you're placing a lot of faith in the long leader fishery if you do that. But certainly if you do that, then that data needs to be checked every week so they can keep track of it and make in-season adjustments that are other than shutting down the fishery. That it would be reducing bag limits so that the fishery will extend throughout the year. For example, today is a day that if the inshore rockfish fishery was open, lots of private boaters, recreational boaters, would be out dropping crab pots because it's now open out in Newport. That's where I fish from. And bottom fishing for a little while near shore there's too much east wind to go 12, 15, 18 miles offshore to be out past the 40 fathom line out of Newport. You don't want to go that far with a strong east wind. So having that fishery open now makes a lot of difference to people like me that fish. There are people that have retired to the coast so that they could fish year round. A couple of other things. Uh, I hope that whatever you do, there's plenty of latitude for the MRP program to make adjustments during the season. I uh, certainly hope you do that. The, uh, approving the long leader fishery, in my opinion, for you should be an absolute no-brainer, and that would be all year long provided the feds approve it. And to add a little emphasis to the year-long opportunity to fish, when I look on the ODFW website, part of the mission is to provide opportunity, the word opportunity is not used, but to provide the resources uh, to provide Oregon residents opportunity to access the resource and to me access means opportunity and that means a year-long fishery however it has to be done to get there thank you by the way it's almost good evening seven more minutes <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, comments thank you panel we have one person left to testify that's Brian McLaughlin did I miss anybody okay do I get 12 minutes? Uh, no, no. <laughs> but you get to pick your seat. All right. Go ahead. Chair Finley, members of the commission, Director Melcher, good evening. Uh, my name is Brian McLaughlin. I reside in Portland, Oregon. I'm a recreational fisherman. I fish out of the Port of Garibaldi in Tillamook Bay. Um, I support very much the priorities that were outlined by uh, the staff about having a year-long season and having, adopting regulations that have a low probability of having to have emergency regulations that significantly reduce the season or close the season. Um, because of those priorities, I mean, I'm a meat fisherman too when I go out for rockfish and lingcod, uh, but because of those priorities, I support option D. I see that as the best opportunity to have a year-long season and to avoid the probability for uh, emergency regulations. But I would also ask that the Commission modify that by directing and authorizing staff if they see as some of the uncertainties of the season become more certain and we see how effort is tracking that they be authorized to increase the bag limit uh, to five, six, or seven rockfish if it looks like we're going to be able to have a year-long season without, without closures. The reason I, I, I pick option D instead of the staff proposal of, of option A is because I read in the staff's analysis that there is a low to moderate likelihood of reaching the harvest guideline in September with option A. And that gave me some concern that we're, with the best modeling they can do with all these uncertainties that we're, we're pushing up against that harvest guideline that you know we have to live with. It's a federal requirement, my understanding is. And I would like to see some more cushion um, than, than, than option A, so I picked option B. I, I hear the, the, the testimony from the, the folks here that make a living by taking out uh, recreational anglers in the charter boat section, and, and I, you know, I, I feel you're in between a rock and a hard place because you're, if, you, if you take the status quo, we're, we're essentially making a bet. We're making a bet that effort will not be as high as 2017 and 2015 and that we'll have our long leader fishery come through. I was told last year that it was likely with the long leader fishery would come through. It didn't happen. I'm told this year it's likely. I don't know if that's really going to happen or not. So my preference is that the commission adopt regulations 
at this point that have a low likelihood of having emergency regulations and then make adjustments as the season goes on if we see that we're likely to meet a year-long season. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm Linda Buell, and I missed my spot for the testimony. Okay, All right. so Linda, uh, is your uh, address the same as? Oh, I see you're on the list. I scratched you off, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so go ahead, I, I have your name and address here. Okay, Chairman Fisher, uh, Linda, Chairman. Linda, Mike, can you move over? Oh, sorry, Chairman Finley, uh, commissioners, thank you for letting me testify. I will not go through what I was gonna go through because most of it has been addressed. Um, I did wanna make sure you understand the point that Washington uh, does, and I'm sorry, I represent a charter boat, so out of Garibaldi. Uh, Washington has a seven fish daily bag limit for their near shore fishery and they, that is according to them what they will continue having. And they charge $10 for a charter fish license. And California, uh, talk to them, their CDFW personally, will have a 10 uh, fish combined bag limit. Uh, it has a sub limit in it of uh, black rock fish. And uh, their license fee, their daily license fee is 15. Oregon's daily license will be 21 and maybe a four fish bag limit. Does anybody know how I can compete with that with our out of state customers and we have a lot of them. Okay, uh, if the charter fleet uh, takes at least half of all recreational fishermen uh, out in their boats believes that a higher six or seven fish bag limit is necessary to be economically viable, their input should be con seriously considered, especially cons if you acknowledge the fact that the ODFW can shut down our fisheries in 48 hours if uh, we go over or could reduce the bag limit in July if it starts looking like it's going to be too much. And uh, we could support that if it was necessary. We're the ones who have the most to lose if our fishing season is closed before September, yet many of us are willing to take the chance uh, of a moderate risk level, a more moderate risk level than ODFW is recommending. Uh, we think the uh, Holloway long leader gear will go into effect in the spring and that will, we will be able to fish that and take a lot of pressure off. If you guys are fishing, would you want to go out for the five or six fish bag limit or would you want to go out for the 10? I mean, that's just the way people are. We have no doubts that we will selling a lot of those trips. We will lose money on those trips. Uh, approximately 18, 20% because we can't put as many people on as we do the near shore fishermen but we'd much rather lose that than, than to not have our customers come. So uh, the, it's because of a tangling problem if you get too many people. Okay, and the last thing I wanna say, making it very quick, uh, is that two years ago, I was here with uh, the charter fleet from Newport and uh, ODFW was uh, recommending a one fish uh, bag limit for blues, blue deacon, rockfish and uh, because of a stock assessment. And uh, the uh, commission and some of the staff worked with the charter fleet and asked them what they could live with and it was either three or four. But you did that and these last two years they've never even come close. So thank you for listening to us then and I hope you'll listen to us now. Thank you. Okay, commissioners. Okay, thank you all. Very much. Thank uh, thank the audience for taking the time to come here. Now we'll try to make some sense of this. <laughs> okay. Come on back up, Maggie. So I think there were some common themes that I'll ask the commissioners to add to, but uh, sub bag limits was one, status quo was, was another. Uh, option A was, you know, spoken to several times. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin's talked about option D and his rationale. Um, so uh, I think, uh, Commissioners, how would you like to do? Would you like to have Maggie address some of the themes that she noted, uh, and or would you just like to one-on-one -on -one ask her questions? I'm thinking, ask her questions that okay that we picked up on. Okay. All right. 
I'll, I'll start with the uh, sub bag limits. Great, thanks, Chair Finley. Uh, we did not, as has been noted, include a recommendation for sub bag limits this year. Um, we did have a six fish black rockfish sub bag limit under the seven fish marine bag. Um, and one of the things we saw happen with that this year was uh, an increase in the rate of uh, discard and discard mortality of black rockfish. What we heard from some anglers was you're out there, you're fishing, you've gotten your six black rockfish, but boy, you really want to fill up that one extra spot in your bag limit. So you stay out, you try to target something else, and you may be going through more black rockfish, catching and releasing them in order to try and get that other fish. Um, I certainly appreciate there may be a, that the fact that that was a one fish difference um, probably creates a fairly strong motivation for that behavior. If you just need one more fish, it's tempting to stay out there and do that. I've had some conversations with folks about the potential for a lower black rockfish sub bag limit. Um, somebody mentioned that, I, I think Linda mentioned that California does have that in their structure. Um, we certainly still hear from people that black rockfish are the, the easiest fish to catch. They're the primary target in this fishery, particularly for less experienced anglers. They may um, have a hard time avoiding black rockfish. So um, it, it certainly could be an option to um, keep catch a black rockfish lower. However, there's uh, another important point to that which is that we also exceeded our recreational harvest guidelines by a significant amount for the minor nearshore rockfish species group, which includes blue and deacon rockfish, quillback, copper, china, other species. Um, and so if we are, you know, if we're limiting the number of black rockfish within that bag limit, or within that bag limit you are just squeezing the, the balloon to somewhere else, um, potentially putting pressure on the other nearshore rockfish species, we also exceeded our harvest guidelines for cabazon and for yellow eye. The species for which we do um, have some room, I'll currently note, are those midwater rockfish species. Canary was brought up, uh, and again, the, the yellowtail and widow rockfish, and our intent um, in really making a strong recommendation for a higher bag limit for offshore long leader fishing um, is to provide increased access for those species. Um, I want to acknowledge that does not um, work for those folks with very small boats or out of the port of Brookings, as we heard in some public testimony, that um, small boat operators just don't want to go out that far, and Brookings really doesn't have an offshore long leader fishery because of the um, lack of offshore reefs there. Uh, but for the in order to um, avoid setting up a situation where we are um, creating regulations that require more discard, potential wastage of fish, and are just more complex and confusing for anglers, we stuck with a recommendation for um, actually simplifying it this year to a single marine fish bag limit, um, except for the carrying forward the existing one fish sub bag for cabazon when that species is open. Let me follow up just briefly. What do we do? Uh, there was one mention in testimony about um, regional regulations. And speaking of Brookings, mm -hmm. um, how do we address that? Currently, we manage the fisheries coastwide to coastwide harvest guidelines. Um, we monitor fishing activity and landings in the recreational fishery by port. Uh, and we do collect some additional area on, on reef area and location of fishing. So we, we have information on where it's occurring. But in terms of management, um, and, and specifically for Brookings, the connection I was making is the point uh, that was raised in public testimony that an offshore long leader fishery may not be a great opportunity for Brookings specifically. Uh, although I think there are some, uh, some opportunities, some available fishing offshore uh, out of the some, pardon me, out of some of the other southern Oregon ports, not quite that far south. Commissioners? Another topics? Yeah, any topic. Your choice. Um, 
So I just wanted to uh, have it clarified. Um, if we go with the um, staff recommendation and we find that, say, in August it's looking like um, the guideline's not going to be met potentially even that year, um, then this temporary rule, is that the mechanism yeah. for changing the um, bag limits in the later part of the year to allow for additional fishing harvest? Thank you, Chair Finley. Commissioner Akinson, yes. Um, the mechanism is temporary rule. Uh, and if I may just maybe take this opportunity to address um, also our, our timing. We certainly do intend to look at our sampling data as it comes in frequently. Um, we make our monthly catch estimates, uh, but it, it's coming in and we want to know what's happening with this fishery and, and we will be looking. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, it is, it is difficult to know uh, really what trajectory the fishery is on until midsummer because it doesn't really start to ramp up until the summer. Uh, but we, we will be looking for um, any opportunity to make an increase if possible or a, 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 a moderate adjustment also if possible and necessary to stay under harvest guidelines. Um, and that would be by temporary rule. Okay. Um, the other question I had was um, with the um, federal um, long leader proposal, um, it sounds like that maybe will happen in the next few months. Is that something that will be part of our regulations then for this year? And is it going into our regulations with the stipulation that it has to be approved first by the federal agencies? Chair Finley, Commissioner Akinson, um, yes, that is our intent and our recommendation uh, that you um, approve. Let me step back. Yes, we are waiting for federal rulemaking to allow that. Uh, and again, what we specifically need the federal allowance for is fishing outside of 40 fathoms using this gear type in April through September. So up until April, we're fine. It can be used. Um, it can be fished at all depths now. Um, so we do recommend that you approve um, state rules that would uh, conform to the federal rule by reference, and then we would just wait to file those until the federal rule is um, finalized. So right now, is it? legal then to fish above or uh, with greater depths than 40 fathoms in October through March? Yes. Okay, so that's an ongoing fishery. Yes. Okay. Pardon me, Chair uh, uh, Finley and Commissioner Egginson, if I may add to that, the under current federal rule, you can fish outside of 40 fathoms. Um, we do not have a you are still restricted by our state bag limit. So unless you take action today to adopt a new long leader fishery bag limit of 10 fish or a different number if you choose, um, that would not continue past December 31st. The temp rule we used this fall to open that opportunity after our bottom fish closure, closure only extends through December 31st. So January 1st we would need um, a, a new rule in place to allow fishing up to a 10 fish bag limit with long leader gear outside of 40 fathoms. Mm -hmm. And so was this year the first, the first year that the long leader um, fishery occurred in Oregon? Thanks, Chair Finley, Commissioner Atkinson. Um, yes, the gear type itself, as I mentioned, has been legal, but there has not been, uh, I think, a lot of use of it at all. The real interest has been that it would um, allow an opportunity to get offshore in the summer to get outside of that normal seasonal depth restriction. Mm -hmm. um, and as several folks brought up, the, the federal rulemaking process for that has been um, quite lengthy. Um, you know, and we, we heard that there have been delays before. Why should we believe now that it will be in place? Um, I, I think we are much farther along in the process, and I have seen some concrete steps in the federal rulemaking that give me more confidence that it will be in place by April of next year. April. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Commissioner uh, Woolley. Hi, Maggie. Uh, so I was hearing, uh, you know, the concerns of a number of the charter operators about um, 
the, the ratio of kind of the, the cost of a daily license and then the number having a small bag limit and that being kind of a deterrent. Now, some operators, and, and one mentioned specifically, they have all Oregonian customers, so they probably have an annual license. And then there are others that have seasonal business, uh, people maybe visiting from out of state, maybe they're just factoring in that $20 along with all the other money they're spending because they're on vacation. Um, so I didn't see the small business impact analysis for this section, and that's often a, a, a habit. I mean, that's a, something that we do with these projects and, the, and these different uh, activities, and so I'm just wondering why that's missing, and I think that would be helpful in helping to determine the impact on these businesses based on uh, maybe considering the different bag limits and you know the amount of money that's spent into the communities and you know just factoring all those things in it because I'm, I'm concerned about business loss um, with with the lower bag limits and um, you know also for those seasonal customers you know we do have a, a very high uh, daily fishing license fee compared to other West Coast states so I just wanted to know kind of your thoughts on all those things yeah thank you chair Finley Commissioner Woolley um, that's a great question thank you when we did the uh, initial um, preparation for this meeting and filing of, of the uh, required need and notice and economic analysis for these rulemaking forms. Uh, it, the, I should say, our staff worked. It's in there. Okay. Yeah, it's in there. okay. All right. Let me go back to that. Though. Right. So it, it's in there. Um, I, I will just add that. It does not incorporate, I think, a lot of the things you have heard today in public testimony. Uh, and we have been hearing those much more recently, too. In fact, after that, after that analysis was done, uh, and I think that it's uh, a, a factor of timing and when the charters and other businesses are really thinking about and pulling together information on the potential impacts um, they have concerns about of this, that we're, start, we're hearing details now. Okay, so I did miss that. I, I flipped through a number of times, and I, I do see that it's in here, so I apologize for that. But I think your point is, is taken is that there's not um, really a very robust analysis mm -hmm. of the projected cost to, um, to small business for the recreational side as compared to what was presented for the commercial. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's a part of it, too. Uh, what is the thinking that's gone into uh, setting our daily fees? Uh, can you can you maybe address? Uh, that, well, that cost? Chair Finley and, and Commissioner Woolley, I, I would say that uh, of course our fees are all set in statute. So um, you and we don't have the latitude in this process to change our our fees. Um, I think uh, our I agree our daily license fee is certainly among if not the highest in the nation it's among the highest in the nation um, I would point out also though that our juvenile license fee juveniles whether residents or non-residents qualify for a single uh, license at ten dollars so juveniles don't have to pay the twenty dollars juveniles pay ten yeah, yeah I, and I, that's I, includes I shellfish as well number. they have to have a social security number There's an option for much less expensive juvenile license, and it does include shellfish as well. That's that's my point. Okay, then I'm aware of that. Thank you, Mr. Buckmaster. Hi, Maggie. Thank you. Um, is there a a seasonal variation in um, species? Harvest does does it change throughout the year? Is it pretty consistent as far as uh, uh, Black Rock? Uh, you see where I'm going? Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Chair Finley and, and Commissioner Buckmaster. I, I think I do. Um, I don't have all the data laid out in front of me. I can say certainly we do see some uh, seasonal differences in catch rates for some species, and we hear uh, and we we see. 
uh, in some of our research data, for example, there's an, an offshore onshore movement pattern. There's um, you heard some in public testimony today that you know some fish go off the bite more in the summer and other times of year. Um, I would say we don't see um, overall on average in the data we don't see extreme seasonal differences there for most species. Uh, but I also think we we have not uh, to this point really tried to factor that into our management of this fishery. So when we sh when we shut down last year, uh, mid September, if we use the average of 2011 2016 on trips from that point onward, it looks like we probably cut. Um, nine to ten thousand trips we lost uh, in the last three and a half months. I think that's if it's an average uh, from 2011. We're waiting. People say let's wait till the end, until we're in a jam, and okay, let's just hope that it's okay and. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can eke it out, and but if you have to change it later on, one of the other options it looks like is if uh, from January through March, again using the 2011 through 2016, there's about 10,000 angler trips there. So I don't know how people feel about if, if front loading the. Uh, the safety valve, mm -hmm. at least a large portion of the safety valve, because you've, we're looking at a couple thousand, a little less than 2,000, January, 2,000 trips, February, up to in March, getting up around, um, getting close to 6,000. So it's just another option. I get a little I get a little nervous thinking that okay let's just wait and uh, then we're going to have the same we're going to have the same situation and the same people being upset uh, next year that we had this year and uh, so maybe we can maybe we can do something at the beginning of this thing and you did that actually on one of the the issues that is not uh, we did not recommend or or has a higher risk is the uh, closed five fish closed like what is it e and i didn't hear did we have any votes for e i don't closed. remember nobody wanted any closure well not nobody i think there was maybe some comment that that was an option but overwhelmingly people did not want to close part of the year that, and what i heard in the mm -hmm. So Maggie, what, what would be your response to uh, considering that option? Thanks, Chair Finley, Commissioner Buckmaster. Um, in terms specifically of an option with a planned seasonal closure, uh, I, I would have to say that most of the public input I heard is to maintain a year-round season. Um, that is very difficult to, to balance and to make work out with the also very strong public input we heard to keep the bag limit high enough to attract anglers. So I, uh, I think it's a challenging decision. Um, in terms of can we, uh, you know, can we watch and wait? There was a lot of suggestion for a, a status quo or a perhaps just a less conservative alternative than staff have recommended. Um, you know, as I said, we, we certainly will be watching this like a hawk next year. We will be um, communicating more frequently and more regularly with our sport advisors and the public. So I think um, the element of surprise may be less next year. We don't know what will happen. Um, perfect storm this year, certainly. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we don't know what we're looking at in the future as well. Um, and so it, it, is, uh, it is a bit of a gamble. Um, I heard 
Something I wanted to um, respond to briefly in terms of turnaround time and how quickly we can implement a closure. Uh, we could close quite rapidly, but that in itself, closing so soon, you know, if we announced and then closed 24 or 48 hours later, um, that's cutting off a lot of fishing in just the upcoming days that has already been planned, and that would be a different kind of disruption. Um, and that's something we would like to avoid if we do end up making some kind of significant in-season adjustment, whether it's a bag limit reduction or a closure, we'd like to give enough notice of that 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 can be implemented in a, a relatively orderly fashion. Um, you know, I, I think we do, based on the experience this year and certainly all the input we've received on this, um, we would be, um, you know, my own personal opinion is that we will be more precautionary in season, uh, particularly if we went, uh, if there was a choice today for a, a less precautionary approach, um, you know, we are, are really going to want to make sure that we can make a bag limit reduction rather than run right up to a closure next year. And so um, that could be happening sooner. Earlier in the year, uh, we are just going to have less of an idea of what trajectory we're on because the, the fishery, again, just doesn't start to ramp up till the summer. So once we are on that steep climb of effort and accumulating catch in the summer, it's, um, it's, it's more challenging to address. So what would that look like in terms of the lettered numbers alternatives, what you just said, to avoid a closure but to be able to have a reduction in bag limits? in a meaningful way without too much disruption of book trips. It's kind of almost at, at opposite ends. Yeah. How do you act swiftly without disrupting bookings? Yeah. You know. Chair Finley, I wish I had a great answer to that question. Um, in, you know, in, in doing some thinking about this and, and how might it play out uh, if we went with for example, something like the five fish year round bag limit. Um, it, it looks like based on our modeling with all of the uncertainties and assumptions I talked about earlier in my presentation, if effort next year is the same as it is this year, uh, we would expect to be uh, looking at, say, about 45% of black rockfish impacts, or, or sorry, we would be looking at reaching 45% of our, uh, having taken 45% of our black rockfish recreational harvest guideline through the end of June, 68% through the end of July, 92% through the end of August. So that's just kind of setting up what we think the, the climb there would look like. Um, and we, we could uh, look at those times and compare where we are and how we're tracking compared to that expectation. Um, we could make a bag limit reduction then. We've been hearing that below, you know, below five, in some cases even down as low as five, is uh, you know, pretty darn undesirable. How do the sub this? How do the sub uh, bag limits figure into what you just said, Chair Finley? If we had a sub bag limit next year, we have not done any of our modeling incorporating a sub bag limit. Um, again, I, I I would just remind us that we were. Uh, I, if I recall right, we were about 24% over our recreational harvest guideline for the other nearshore rockfish species, including blue and deacon and the others. So I, I would be concerned about a black rockfish sub bag limit pushing, uh, you know, just moving impacts to those. We could add a sub bag limit for those species, and it just starts to become um, something that Mr. Goddard would stop having fun explaining to his customers. Uh, Commissioner Weber is going to uh, solve this for us. Perfect. I am. <laughs> well, I guess I just I just come up with this, trying to look at it as simply as I can. We have a certain number of fish. 
if we want to fish all year long, then you have to calculate what that is. And nobody here likes that number. Mm -hmm. um, if you do the sub bag limits, uh, and I don't know if you could do something like you can catch six fish, five of which can be a black rock fish, and you have to stop fishing when you get five. Yeah. Then oh, you, you know, uh, that may help. And I, but I don't know how all that fits together. Uh, but what I'm seeing is um, at that, those numbers I think are basically headed towards a closure or a significant reduction in the bag limit, which is what everybody here doesn't want. And, and I just don't see how we can get the bag limits high enough that the uh, charter people can make what they say make money and not end up with a with a closure thanks chair Finley and commissioner Weber um, it is very challenging uh, and I we have heard the same from charters uh, particularly we've heard quite a bit of public input I will say after we developed our um, the uh, agenda item summary and it, it was be circulated among the public and we heard from a lot of people about it uh, and the difficulty in selling charter trips with a uh, predetermined bag limit as low as four fish um, so it, it is a very difficult balance I think between trying to plan something that has a, a low risk of in-season closure but um, uh, and also it leaves enough room for our, our, our for charter customers to make reservations and book trips and get going. So the closure last year, though, that was the result of this perfect storm, right? So I mean, it's kind of probability and chance. What is what is the chance? I mean, how often would that actually occur? We don't know that. You know, we're looking at that worst case scenario, and that's affecting how we're thinking about it this year. And that could be, a, you know, once a decade or, I don't know, once every 20 years. We don't, we don't really know. Or it could be the new normal. Yeah. Yeah. It could, it could be either one. It, it seems like the, the operators that are proposing status quo must be taking that in consideration when they're thinking about it. I mean, they're thinking about, yeah, we, we may have to close if, if we're operating at this level and this bag, this bag limit. And they're seeming to not they're seeming to be willing to take the risk. I mean, most of the folks that, that we've heard from. So, I mean, that's their economic, you know, gain or downfall. You know, it's kind of on them, but that's their decision. Let's see your hands if you want to take a risk. One thing we're going on is that long meter, and I think that's going to help you guys out, out a lot, but I don't well, know what you're talking about. We're going to, we, we heard the report that it may be out in April. We'll do some back behind the scenes pushing on that. The next thing we're counting on is communication yeah. between the staff and the fishing team. Yeah. I, 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 we're going to make sure all of us, the directors, already talked to that, and Maggie has spoken to that. We're, yeah. we're going to ensure that's, that. That's what we're counting on. Okay. Okay. Can you also ask how many want to make sure they have a year on season? Okay. So, um, Six and a sublimit of five. Uh, are we talking about that? A sub bag limit of black rock fish of five within a six fish? Well, I was wondering, you have, you've only asked for a vote on one side. The other side is do you want to be assured that yeah. you have a year round season? Yeah, there is a question of how many of you feel comfortable with less than a year round season. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like both things are possible. Yeah, you can't have both. If, if, if you do the communication with staff, with your own sports advisory committee, which when it was first enacted, we did have better communication than we did last <coughs> year. And as Maggie told us and told you guys earlier, 
that when they thought they could get through Labor Day because they didn't want to do it, and then when August was so high because there's no opportunity for tuna fishing, and everybody went fishing anyway, but they went fishing for black rock fish instead of tuna, that's where it skyrocketed, and that's where we went over, and that's where if we would have had a meeting after Labor Day with the Sports Advisory Committee, we could have lowered the limit then, and we could have probably made it, but since the perfect storm scenario hit, it did not work. If we would have had that meeting in July, after June's numbers came out, that said we go 46% into our black rockfish quota, which we're all still having a tough time with, because the ocean conditions were lousy January, February, March, and April. Okay, I think I... If we had that meeting then, we could have made adjustments then, because we all know what the summer fishery is like. Okay, so we're... We're going to thank you for your participation on, on this bit. We're going to get back to our deliberations here. So how do we sew this up? Let me um, maybe ask a question of Maggie. So um, clearly much is hinging uh, for particularly the economics of charter operators on the long leader approval or not. And I understand there's a lot of uncertainty built into the model, at least seven to eight percent on last year's yeah, trip number versus five-year averages. And it's been estimated that the long leader fishery could push effort from five to 10 percent. So there's a good chance that there's some room there. I guess the question that I have is in terms of the um, pending approval of this piv critical fishery, option B extends the six fish bag limit up through May, which would be presumably, if this is going to get approved, this would be the time period that that would happen. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering, given the risk tolerance of many people in the room, if we took the slightly more risky approach of having the higher fish limit there seems to be a lot of expectation that fishery will be approved at which point the four fish constraint of the summer is less of an issue because you can sell them another opportunity um, which it sounds like people really want to be able to sell that opportunity no, 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 no. no No, you have the option to give them the long leader 10 fish offshore. Not from Brookings. Understand. I understand. Okay. Not from Brookings, but we're managing a, on a coast wide basis here. I guess uh, to allow for some time period for that pending approval to actually happen is option B. I look at your risk analysis in your slides with your deviation. It seems like it's, you put it into a medium category, but that's kind of arbitrary. It's kind of at the low end of medium and what you're recommending is at the high end of low. <laughs> what would be the risks of um, allowing for that? and? Please help me understand why I, I didn't mean to uh, <laughs> imply that Brookings in the South Coast is less important in that way. Let's, what about taking a risk since we all agree that we, even if we don't want to, we can crank back and we would work with the advisory groups, but we, we, we approve a six fish with a sub bag limit of five black rock fish. Sir, if I may, we're talking about risks. Every one of these people here is taking a risk. They're self-employed. I'm self-employed. We take these risks every day. And most of us are sitting here saying, you know, let's run that status quo. That, I think, maybe I'm hearing wrong, but it's not like most of us want that status quo. Every day of our lives, we're taking risks, and we're willing to do that. Now, you do a great job. You do, so not get angry at you, but we're willing to take those risks. We're willing to take that hit. And it's not just the, the, the businesses. It's sports people that don't want to come down. I take, I take 20 to 50 phone calls a day, even though there's no fishing going on right now. 20 to, we become an information hub in Charleston. 
and everybody that calls and we say we might be going this four four fish limit they're done with Oregon because with the crab closures and this they're done they're not coming back this is California Idaho Washington points all over this country Oregon is a mecca and a hub for sports people and we can't risk losing that now can we explain to people mid-season end of season yeah we made the wrong decisions this was the perfect storm and as one of the esteemed members had said is this every 15 years, 20 years? I don't think we have record of this ever happening before. And we can hope and pray it doesn't happen again, but life is risks, and we take risks. And I'll shut my mouth now. I just apologize, and I appreciate you indulging. What do you think? You want to go with the status quo? I don't. Okay. Well, I mean, that's we got into this mess last year. Right. <laughs> and so we went with a more aggressive option because of this same testimony. We're willing to take the risk. The risk led to a closure which is unpalatable and is hugely economically damaging to a lot of businesses. But it's a maybe, it's a maybe it goes bad. Whereas when we go for rockfish, it's a guaranteed go bad. You're signing the death warrant for some of these people. Me, I'll survive, I, I've got a lot of diversity. But some of these people, they're gonna die if we go to four rockfish. They will, I promise they will. I deal with charter folks every day. I think we need to let the commission keep going with their deliberations. Yeah. I'm sorry. Normally they don't even let us talk. You're right. Us. I apologize. I should have. I'd like well. to say one more thing. No. No. It's not that risk that caused the closure. We took that risk, but it was everything else that came along with it. It was the lack of sound, the lack of tenant. It was a lack of communication between the fishing community and ODFW. Extraordinarily good weather. And extraordinarily good weather. So starting with six and going until you find out what the feds do is a good compromise. Go with the status quo. Get the long leader fishery in there. The charter companies will work with ODFW. Yeah, and we will govern ourselves. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. We're going to stop the uh, open mic <laughs> and, 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 and deal with what we have to deal with. Um, Commissioner Buckmaster, I know you're thinking. <laughs> I'm a big believer in small business. I don't think we can go to the status quo, which is seven fish, correct? It is. Um, if uh, we wanted to go, if, if there is a proposal that we start at six and uh, we uh, knowing full well that uh, we may need to change it. Yeah. I think the sub bag, I, I am concerned about discards. I mean, what, I don't want to kill fish to, to, to save fish. To save, <laughs> save fish. Should this, um, I, I don't know enough, I don't know enough about at inshore releasing to, to know if that's a, a, a major issue. If it, if it can be done, I would prefer to have a six fish with a four fish, not five, uh, sub bag. But I, I could live with that knowing full well that there are going to be people in this room that are going to be screaming if things go bad that are not going to remember because I, because I wouldn't remember if I were you. So I, just, so I, could, li I could live with it. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why we don't look at at least uh, giving ourselves a little break with things like January and February. If it were, if that were my business, I'd go. There's not enough there to uh, uh, really stay. If I'm going to close for a couple months, I'm going to do January, February. I'm going to start this thing in March. I'd give myself as much of an opportunity to run through as possible as a small businessman. But uh, that's uh, that's kind of up to up to the small business people. So, Commissioner, just to clarify, Commissioner Buckmaster, so you were suggesting a six fish uh, limit, you know, step down from status quo. So, would that be a, a year-round six fish, or would that be a, a seasonal, say October to May? I mean, similar to. Uh, alternative B that Commissioner Anderson proposed. So are you talking about seasonal or are you talking about year-round? I'm talking about until we have to change it. If, it, if, I, if I were making a motion, B. I would close this fishery in January and February. 
I'd open it on March 1st with six fish. I'd run six fish until we need to change it. And if that, and if that, we can get through the rest of the year, that's fine. If we didn't get through the rest of the year, that's the way it is. Uh, we can cut down to four as soon as we see us moving at a certain percentage. I don't think, I don't think our department's going to get caught with uh, the uh, communication again issue. I, I, that doesn't even concern me. So. Well, we've already pledged well, I th to do it. So. I, I think it was a concern for the department when they did it. We all heard about it as far as there was no, there was no question that uh, people felt bad about it. So it won't happen. Well, I don't see it happening again. We're going to be, right, we got to close off the to open be mic. In Come on. This situation for at least the coming four or five, ten years. And, uh, I think Commissioner Buckmaster's suggestion of con contemplating closing is something that the Sport Fish Advisory Council, or I don't know if I named that right, that you can take up with your advisory council, but to do something that would affect um, three weeks from now, I don't think is something I'm comfortable with for 2018. Okay. And if we did approve, you know, if we start with six fish, and we move with six fish, knowing that four fish is what it's slated to be for the peak summer months, but that we're going to use in-season management to moderate that. If long leader comes online and we see that it is indeed shifting effort or some of the really strong recommendations of Mr. Craven um, regarding other ways that they that the industry itself could could take some efforts to reduce impacts, then maybe the four fish can be averted. But we have to work within the models and the constraints that are given to us. And I think that running anything that's going to come up to um, us shutting down the fishery in September for this year is, is not tenable. Um, I know staff recommendation is for, for option A. Um, I think option B is slightly more aggressive, and it's not to say that a sub bag limit couldn't be considered under temp rule. Yes, is that is that a possibility that uh, after more diligence and consideration and looking at how things are aligning for the summer projections that maybe things can be modified, but we have to approve something here today. Um, I, I don't think that we should be uh, looking at status quo, but I think that this is close. So are you thinking about um, making a motion on alternative A? Actually, I'm thinking about making a motion on alternative B, B. with the recognition that there is in-season uh, adjustments that can still occur that may include sub-bag limits or otherwise. It just adds two more months. I like the two more months is um, just extending the time period with which we would expect the feds to uh, give us more certainty one way or another on what the viability is of this pivotal, critical other fishery option. Split the difference. Mm -hmm. You can do one more. I guess I, I would just, um, if I Go if ahead. I may, and I uh, as. As you all know, as you all may or may not know, I don't have a vote, so uh, I, I'm, I'm speaking only here um, as I don't have a vote. But I think one, one option, and I, I hear what Commissioner Anderson's saying, but one option would be to implement the alternative B with the six, with the six fish throughout. One, assuming that we're going to get the long leader fishery approved which I I think we are but we'd have that assumption built in we would be rolling the dice a little bit but uh, I think what I've heard from these folks is that they want to sit down with us in as early as June or whenever we have uh, monthly catch updates that we can look at and compare to how things were last year and then talk about in-season management to maximize the probability that we don't have a closure and I think, um, given the late hour and given our need to certainly move forward with this this month as opposed to punting until sometime next year, we don't want to do that. Uh, I think that would, I think that will work. It's, it's gonna, 
there's a there is, and I am very sensitive to your issues of um, of uh, in season management, and this is one of the things we hear all as you all know mm -hmm. all too well. We hear always that we want certainty, but we also want maximum opportunity. <laughs> And it is very difficult to deliver both certainty and maximum opportunity because they are, in many cases, mutually exclusive. Yeah. So what we're hearing here is that um, our interest in maximum opportunity with some balance of certainty is where, where these folks want to be. And we'll make that work. The department will make that work if it's the commission's okay. desire. Are you comfortable? So on? I don't have a vote, though. But um, With alternative B? Mm -hmm. So is that B with six fish right. across the board? That's what I was indicating. It was just you just. Well, that's not B then. B has it, well, the it's it's a variation of B. It's a variation of B, but it's basically you just take mm -hmm. it's okay. You can call it A with six fish, whatever you want to call it, but it's essentially just six. Or start with six, with six fish, fish and adopt or uh, and manage in season, and we're betting on the come that we're going to get the long leader fishery, and it's going to make a difference. And in April, if we don't. That's, that's the first indicator that we're going to be looking even more closely at in-season management in terms of reduction, bag limit reductions. I'm just trying to find us a way out of this without maintaining flexibility and um, well, also maintaining... Go ahead, Holly. It sensitive. seems like that alternative is a higher risk than anything that's proposed for us right here. I'm afraid uh, it sets up a false sense of what we expect to be realistic if we say six across the board and then we have to do in-season adjustments. Um, if we look at it as B as written, we have the opportunity to add fish, which is more palatable than saying six straight across and removing fish, at least from customer's yeah. perception. Well, it's great to sell it, but if it's not viable, then it's not really honest to put it out there. I don't think it's honest to say we could do six fish 12 months in, in the scenarios that have been presented to us by staff. Could, could we hear from Dr. Braby? Dr. Braby to the front, please. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you you wanted to speak, so I just wanted to make sure that happened. Okay. Yes. Um, I want to point out a couple of things, and thank you for calling me up. And I, I um, sympathize with everyone in the audience. I sympathize with you. I sympathize, sympathize with myself, with my staff. This is a no-win situation. Um, and as Kurt said, these two goals are mutually exclusive. And um, one of the things that I look at when I see a six fish bag through May and moving to a four fish bag is that at the end of May, we're not gonna know if we can go to a higher bag. Enough of the fishery is not going to have occurred for us to increase the bag at that point. And so if you want to us to manage this fishery in season, we need something different in order to have something higher than a four fish bag at the beginning of the high season. Something different other than a four fish bag. Right. Like what? not a full year. So I guess- We, we um, will have a four fish bag in June is what I'm saying. We're right. not going to have enough information to make it anything other than start with one. even if, if you modeled this. in an approval of the long leader fishery. Even if okay, because we that's do what not I have was assuming would give you more information to be more um, permissive in in the near shore fishery is if there was indeed an approved offshore fishery. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we don't know how that long leader fishery is going to perform. A, we don't know if we're going to get it, and B, we don't know how it's going to perform. Even with all of the work that's gone on and the enthusiasm that you hear, we have mostly heard from charter operators who have been able to use it for a couple of weeks during one year when everything else was closed. We do not have any way to predict 
what private anglers as a whole are going to do if they're going to be successful and if they're going to go after that in this first year. I think in the long term it's going to be very helpful, but we don't know. And so it comes up against that certainty issue. We don't have any certainty of what it's going to do to decrease the effort. Okay, so Karn, what, what are you saying? That you're staying with the uh, A or are you thinking B and the alternatives? There's a two month difference. Yeah, Maggie. Thanks, Chair Finley. Um, I think either one, I think the point Karen made that regardless of which one of those alternatives we choose, by the end of May, we will not know enough yet to uh, know whether we have room to make a bag limit increase or not. And so if we have started the year with a planned four fish bag limit, for June, um, I, I think we are unlikely to be able to make an increase uh, before later in the summer than that. And I have heard some um, very meaningful concerns about the ability to sell trips. Um, I, I wanted to, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about the perfect storm and whether we might expect conditions next year to be a repeat of this year um, or effort levels for whatever reasons are next year, um, you know, we don't know. And that that's certainly brings us back to the discussion we've had. Certainly we'll be watching it more closely, but it will take us until the fishery gets going. Um, you know, you have had some discussion about a, a six fish across the board, um, perhaps starting with that or starting with status quo, seeing um, what it looks like in season. Um, I would suggest that maybe a five fish year round bag, which is one of the alternatives there, um, would be something you add into that discussion. The 10% um, the plus or minus effort level uh, scenarios that we included in our modeling this year, um, you know, the, the intent of those was to give us a framework and something to look at if we're having a discussion on what we might expect for next year. If we did see a 10% reduction in effort on nearshore bottom fish next year, um, that that would bump, based, according to our risk categorization, that would bump a five fish year-round bag down to moderate. Um, that's that's still a moderate risk. It's not low risk, not no risk, but that you know again that might be something for your consideration given the emphasis we've now had on in-season monitoring and communication and change if needed. I'm, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of C, which is the five fish, um, and this is the year round, and this is only the black rock fish. Is that correct or wrong, or how does that affect what we're doing? Thanks, Chair Finley. Commissioner Weber, thank you for that question. Um, the bag limit would be for um, all fish that are part of our marine fish bag limit. So that's any rockfish species, greenling, cabazon, other species that are not called out in a separate bag limit. Um, the modeling we have done here and that I presented earlier today focused on black rockfish since that is at this point the most limiting factor for our fisheries. Um, but it is it is not, I don't want to give you the impression by saying that, that the other species are not very close in, in line in terms of being limiting factors. Hence our recommendation against a sub bag limit that would increase pressure on other species. So what we've been looking at in terms of risk is closure because of hitting the black rockfish limit. We do have a, a little bit more flexibility because of some sharing opportunities at the federal level with some of the other species that we don't have with black rockfish. But back to the point, the marine bag is for all rockfish species. Okay. <clears throat> so you want to make a motion? Then I would, before the motion, I just okay. wanted maybe just feedback, will, will five fish sell? Will, will five fish bring customers? I'm just curious about it. 
Is that like too much compromise or can it be lived with for, for now? Okay, no more audience participation. Okay, we've got some business here to do. We've given you a lot of leeway that we don't do. I would move that uh, we adopt uh, alternative C, which is uh, five fish year round. Um, so, do you want a second before we go to questions, or how does no. well, we have a discussion? We can have a discussion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Now let's discuss. Do, we don't have a second. I think she said. No, Bruce oh, just Bruce. said. Oh. Yeah, let's second. Then we can have a discussion. Yeah. And then someone can always withdraw their motion. So I guess in the situation where if it's similar to last year, um, for example, say the scenario is then in. Early August, it's clear that we're going to run out of guideline fish available. Um, then would ODFW drop that uh, bag limit low enough to be able to extend the season throughout the year, or keep it higher and close the season down? I think our goal would be um, to keep it open if we could, but I think we would want to take into consideration the input we've gotten from our sport advisory committee on what those goals would be at that point. Because I, we had that situation this year. We had a situation where we had, um, we had the ability to modulate the bag we chose to follow the guidance we've received in past years, and that goal ended up not being the goal that the industry wanted after all, because it led us to that closure. And that goal was getting through Labor Day. So we would want a re-clarification of what that goal is if we got ourselves into that situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe. Thanks, Commissioner Atkinson. I, I've certainly heard quite a bit today about the importance of a year-round season for some fishers. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's what we would be thinking about going in, but certainly we would be consulting with our Sport Advisory Committee, which has members representing both charter and private interests as well as fishing-related businesses, um, and would be very interested in their input at that point. Okay. Um, the other thing is it seems like our input, we've got some great so, feedback not, from not, people not, in the charter the industry, but are there differences from private fishermen that fish on their own and in, in their interests relative to this issue as far as whether, I mean, we're balancing, do you want a year, do you want a year round season with fewer fish in the bag or do you want a bigger bag and a high pro higher probability that the season will not last all year. Chair Finley, Commissioner Akinson, I would summarize what I've heard um, as, as there is a difference uh, pretty much consistently from private boat anglers. I have heard uh, the first priority being to maintain a year-round season. Um, and while everyone has also said keep the bag limit as high as possible, I think I've heard um, a willingness to accept a lower bag limit getting down into the four fish range or so if that's necessary. 
Um, from the charter fleet, uh, I think most of what I heard is a, a much stronger message that there is a point at which um, the bag limit becomes too low for them to operate their businesses, and that point is somewhat higher than for fish, is what we've heard from them. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think, uh, you know, you heard a little bit in public testimony earlier that there was some split um, opinion among the charter group about whether uh, to support a shortened season or not. I know some, I've heard from some charters that would support that, say we, we need a high enough bag limit and so that's our first priority and if we have to shorten the season to get that, um, that would be our preference. We've heard from others that they do fish year round, they have bottom fishing business year round, but they also need that higher bag limit. But I, I overall, yes, I, I am hearing a pretty notable difference between those two sectors. Okay. So, Commissioners, we have other people in the audience. We have three more agenda items. So, um, in fairness to all you folks who came here, we've, we've deviated a lot to try to get your input, but we do have to move along. I'd like to make master. two quick comments. The first one is, I think, we, I think at some point we're going to have to get over this issue of closure. Um, I, I've, I've fished all over the world, as has our chair. I, I don't, I can't think of any fishery that I've, uh, I've engaged in that doesn't have, for one reason or another, a closure. It's hard to do, but at some point we're going to have to start, we're going to have to look at, unless something dramatically changes. That's the first. And the second, I would like to congratulate your, your staff. I've worked with uh, Columbia River for so, so long worrying about leaving fish on the table. And I don't believe you've ever left a fish on the table. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all. Okay. So, commissioners, we have a motion and a second. We've had discussion. Should I call a question? I'm ready. Could you um, state C. it again? C. It was for alternative C. Okay. Okay. Comfortable with that? All right. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, it passes um, unanimously by the six commissioners I'm present. Just do that. And Mr. Chair, um, so Commissioner Weber made the motion. Yes. And Commissioner Buckmaster seconded the motion. Com Thank you. I, I also wanted to just clarify for the record that that includes the motion, even though it referenced alternative C, it also includes the, all the other package yes. of recommendations and attachments D, C, or attachment That's provided three by staff. that the staff made. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So the whole suite. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. We know this means a lot to you. You've got to see sausage made. Uh, we tried to make your best interest at heart. Plus, we have people that aren't here today who we have received written comments from. So we have to take that into account, too. We just can't have one population working with us to determine this. But thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.